gun is a tool, Marion. No better, no worse than any other tool. An axe, a shovel, or anything. A gun is as good or as bad as the man using it. Hello, and welcome to the Dice Brigade's uh, Six Gun September. I'm Chris, and this is a friend of mine who is also... Chris? Chris, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this channel has a higher than average amount of Chris. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, we wanted to do a video where we have a conversation about one of my top five favorite novels, and I know you enjoy it too. Yeah, it's in my top four. Top four? Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, uh, and this is Shane by uh, Jack oh. Schaefer. I was actually really lucky. I got a hardback of it. Man. Yeah, um, yes. That was fun. Um, okay. So I guess, again, guys, you'll have to bear with us as we're figuring this out. We've never shot a video like this before. So, uh, um, Chris, okay. do you want to tell me, uh, what about Shane do you like? Um, I, when I first read it, uh, what struck me the most was the, um, the, the biblical allusions that, that Shane is a, as a Christ type, even though it's interesting that Jack Schaefer um, kind of denied that, even though, uh, not that he was... Um, I don't. I don't know that he was opposed to um, someone seeing that in the book, but he uh, made it clear that it wasn't intentional. And it seems uh, everywhere in the book you find it over and over again. And even so, at the uh, end, yeah, uh, we'll get yeah, to that. Yeah. But at the end, he even says like, uh, I, he says, I, I, um, I suspect that about finishes it. Yes, right. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So, um, it is finished. so yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so being the Christ figure, he comes out uh, from the unknown. Yep, he yeah. comes in. He does. Uh, he does his work. Mm -hmm. He even talks about being about his work or something like. It, it's interesting. It's, uh, and, and then and then he leaves when he's done. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where people would get the Christ figure from. Mm -hmm. And you're not the only person I've heard who said that Shane is a Christ figure. Yeah. Well, and even the fact that the family he comes to are named Joe and Marion. I mean, oh. you see, like, uh, yeah, it seems a bit on the nose, and yet it's, uh, and yet I, I didn't catch it the first time through either. That like that mm. that, that occurred to me later. That's a fact. If, if I hadn't read it somewhere, that, is, that had to be pointed out to me. So it's funny that, as uh, as as obvious as it seems, it still is. It's a it's a uh, it's an illusion that can slip past. So that's yeah. something I've never noticed. Um, I wonder if it's um, if he subconsciously did it, because uh, because okay. Tolkien. When he when he set out to write the Lord of the Rings, he didn't intend for there to be Christian symbolism and, and follow Catholic symbolism in it too. But he later on admitted that yeah, this is too too close. Like um, Gladriel is, uh, he said that definitely she was inspired by the the Virgin Mary. Mm, yeah. Um, okay. So I would wonder if that was subconscious. I don't know anything about Jack Schaefer. I didn't have time to really research him before this video. Um, but Joe and Mary, am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 there's and more and more come out throughout. I mean, once you once you uh, put on those those bifocals, so to speak, where you're seeing the Western and seeing the Christian subtext, I guess um, you, you, it's everywhere. And uh, yeah, so. I, I I was noticing that this time reading through it with that with that lens um, that there's definitely definitely Christian symbolism there. Yeah. yeah. Again, I, I'm I'm willing to give um, Jack Schaefer uh, is it Jack Schaefer? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Schaefer, yeah. Guys, I'm really bad about names. I apologize. No, okay. But I'm willing to give Jack Schaefer the benefit of the doubt and say he probably wasn't intending that when he wrote it. Like, it wasn't in the front of his mind. Yeah. But it, had, it would have said, I wouldn't, it seems like it's seeping through. Although, at the same time, I wonder, and I'm not, uh, again, I don't know the, enough about the author to comment on um, his, his, his integrity, character, whatever, as far as, you know, whether or not he would be someone who would be less than forthright about mm -hmm. that so uh, i'm not making any sort of uh, comment on that at all but it's interesting that his um uh it, it seems so obvious that i know there are artists and writers that uh, that mostly artists come to mind but uh one in particular but you, you they uh for some reason it seems like they want to keep people guessing or they want to somehow mm. distance themselves from what seems obvious or me. And I'm not sure if that's uh, why they would want to do that. Um, I don't know if it's maybe, maybe if they, and I'm not saying he did this. And again, I want to be careful about that, but it, I'm wondering if um, by making it, if it, let's do a what if, if it were intentional, um, once you began to say that I did this, then I wonder if critics would come in and begin to just look for that and look for ways in which it is faulty at being mm -hmm. uh, a parallel or an analogy. And then, um, and, and so this way, it's almost like, it looks like just a, an amazing coincidence or a happy accident. So it gets the benefit of the doubt and it, and it carries forth with more optimism than, than uh, cynicism. 
Right. So, right. But, but that's just, that's looking at, that, that's suspecting that he's not been completely uh, honest with us, but but he, he may well be because well, things like that can happen. And, uh, another person that would have uh, would have seen this symbolism too more in the movie um, would be the director of Logan, okay. um, the, the X-Men movie, um, because he put Shane, the Shane movie in the background in a couple of scenes. Okay, I've heard And then at that, the yeah. end, um, after, uh, spoiler alert for a very old movie, I yeah. mean, what, that's got to be over 10 years now since... It's close it's, to it. It's, it's 2017 yeah. or something. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Logan, um, Logan dies at the end of that movie. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, his kind of daughter in the show quotes Shane, and mm. they, they have the cross um, for his tomb, and then she turns it over to the X. So uh, Logan is supposed to be a Chrysler figure in that one as well, gosh, as far as his self sacrifice. Oh, interesting. I see that. Um, yeah. So anyway, so yeah. he also would see that as well. Although it's interesting, I understand that if the if the quote is the one from the movie, then it's uh, interesting that 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 famous quote is not in the book. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah, there, there yeah, are no yeah, more guns in the valley. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, the movie. So, that's what they quote. Yeah. That's what the girl quotes. At yeah. Least. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, cool. So uh, yeah, you recommended the book to me. Uh, Shane, yeah, some, um, some kind of going back to where uh, my kind of first time reading, and I had seen the movie, and I um, I didn't, I liked the movie, but I didn't love it. I was really young too, um, so I haven't seen it since then. But my dad loves this movie, mm -hmm. but so I was thinking that the book and the movie would, would be similar, mm -hmm. and I read the book and I was blown away by how good it was. Right. Like it, uh, so so I actually, the book is so good. I think it might hurt the how good the movie is for yeah. me. Like yeah. uh, so, I need to rewatch the movie. I planned on rewatching it before this video is filmed, but I just ran out of time. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think if I go back and rewatch the movie, I, I do remember there are certain scenes that I really didn't care for. Yeah, and I don't uh, think Marion Marion is as good of a character in the movie uh, as she is in the book. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think there's um, in, in a way, and and again, I, I I'm. I'm like you, I haven't seen the film in some some time, so um, I'm trying to think of the. So you have uh, Alan Ladd. Um, I, I should have brushed up my memory for who the actors were who played those parts, but I mean, we I, can look it up real quick. Sure, yeah. I, I know that she's the. Um, um, sh she was in her, I think, early 50s when she did that film, and so she's kind of, as far as being this young homestead family, and of course she, she, she looks younger than her age, but. Um, She's. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I don't want to go so far as to say she's miscast, but it this it does seem like she because I think I think the role she plays it just fine. Mm -hmm. But um, Gene Arthur. Gene Arthur. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And it, the guy that plays. Oh, that's Jack, Jack Wilson. Wilson. Oh. Where's the fellow that plays the um, uh, Joe Star? It has, oh, it's uh, Van. Van Heflin. Okay. Yeah, Van Heflin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's a uh, that's Joey, which his name is Bobby. Stare it in the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, um, that was when I when I'm teaching that in class. With the, like we're wondering, like, why did they change his name? It's like I guess they just did it so it wasn't so confusing that he had the same name as his, uh, had the same name as his dad. But, um, but anyway, there's um. So so I I don't know. So yeah, I think she does come out a little better in the in the um, in the book than in the film. The the scene. I, I don't I hope we're not. I'm not stirring things up here. We're like, giving our initial give, thoughts give on it. That's totally fine. Okay. We're going to be kind of going a step by step for the book as well. Just we'll, we'll comment on the scenes um, that happened in the book. Uh, but go ahead. Just oh, go ahead. And oh, no, just gonna, the scene, the, the whole, and I understand why they they do these uh, kinds of scenes in in Hollywood films. But the whole scene with him, um, uh, the the dance scene, in in the film, it, it just seems like I. I just kind of wait for that scene to be over when, I, when I'm watching the film. Everything See, else, I don't remember the dance. Oh, you scene, don't. So. Okay, okay, yeah, um, yeah. There's a scene where there, there's some kind of <laughs> some kind of social event, and mm -hmm. he and so you see this scene where he's dancing with, uh, uh, with that is uh, Shane Alamad's character is dancing with uh, Gene Arthur's character Marion. So and and I, I think it's just mostly to show that there's chemistry between those two characters. Mm -hmm. That's that's not in the book. It comes through in other and better ways in the book, mm -hmm. but. Um, uh, but, but for Hollywood's uh, take on it, they wanted to. Sure. Um, also, uh, interestingly enough, Clint Eastwood kind of remade Shane. I heard about that, yeah. Um, yes. I'm it's either Pale Rider or High Plains Drifter. I think it's Pale Rider. Okay, I, I think, think you're right, because yeah. High Plains Drifter is a remake of High Noon. Mm -hmm. um, okay, okay, gotcha. Right. It sounds... I, I, see if I'm getting you, that right. You, you know um, more about it than I do, because I... Because, yeah, the Pale Rider is where... Um, okay, yeah, I'm trying... They're, they're, they're both kind of similar. The... the 
the differences in Clint Eastwood's movies is it's more um, obvious that he is supernatural in both those movies. Yeah. I just watched those movies back to back, so my brain's kind of confusing them. Um, but I'm try- am, am I right about Pell Rider being a remake of High Noon? Yes, yes, because the bad guys were arrested, and then they're coming back, um, and he tries to kind of reunite the town, but then it's it's loosely a remake of High Noon. It's not quite one for one. But High Plains Drifter? or Pell Yeah, Rider? yeah, and then Pell Rider is more yeah. obviously a remake of Shane. Okay, yeah. And, and I remember reading uh, when I was preparing for for um, uh, teaching Shane, I was kind of curious uh, going into some of the movies and so on about who Shane is, because there's a discussion in the class that we would have about, you know, Shane is so extraordinary. Is he is he more than mere mortal? Mm-hmm. And, and so, and I remember Clint Eastwood saying when he was making Pell Rider, in his mind, as he's playing that part, uh, his character was a ghost. Yeah. And so, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. and so he's, uh, so he had no doubts that the character he was playing was more than a mere mortal. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the reasons why there's this incongruity between the movie and the uh, the, the book, Shane, is that um, they, the, uh, the, it seems like the movie is deliberately trying to dial Shane back from being a larger-than-life character. Oh, yeah. And, and in the book, he's very much a larger-than-life yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, so. um, the, the Pale Rider movie uh, pays homage to the way Shane leaves the book. Um, to where he just seems like he just fades away. Oh, interesting. Um, but we'll get into that too. Yeah, okay, but okay. Uh, yeah, but that's how the um, that's how Pell Rider ends. Is okay. uh, he's riding off, and then like uh, some fog rolls over, and when the fog oh, clears, he's gone. It's a cool shot. I um, see. It's interesting. It's almost like again the, with the the Christian um, uh, typography, like uh, being taken up into the clouds. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I'm not going to get into my thoughts on those movies. I, I have thoughts on them, but I'm not going to really get into okay, them. <laughs> I, I, and it's been so yeah. long since I've seen them. I don't think I've ever seen High Plains of Drifter and Pell Rider. It seems like I saw it at a drive-in or something when I was a mm. kid or something. Some, I've fun. got memories of it, but I, they're they're piecemeal. Yeah, so. I, I think they were both uh, on YouTube's. Like they have um, videos that are free with ads, so you watch them and you get oh, some okay. ads. And it was either that or Tubi, uh, Tubi TV. Mm-hmm. Both of those are you can watch free movies. You just have to put up with some ads. Okay. But, um, yeah. That's where I would have seen both of those okay. movies at. But anyway, uh, we're we're talking about Shane. Yeah. Um, is there any other thoughts you'd like to do kind of as a prelude here? As a prelude? Yeah. A shame. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't believe we've cut all the way to the end. So uh, <laughs> pre- <laughs> the, end of the end of the book and the movie. So uh, we've had a pretty extensive prelude. I better not say any more. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so the book opens up. Uh, the book is told ex- almost like exclusively from Bobby's point of view. It is exclusively from Bobby's point yeah, of view. Yeah. It's almost like he's mm-hmm. recounting the tale or this mm-hmm. might be a journal entry or mm-hmm. something like that. I, um, and I love this too. This is one of my favorite narrative devices: is when you have the uh, the the boy and the man, or the girl and the woman, where you have the, the the child perspective told from the adult's memory of it. And so you kind of get you it, it's it, it allows it gives you the room to tell stories that you could in no other way. Yeah. And Shane is definitely that kind of story. Yeah. And there's a lot of parts where Bobby's will say, uh, "I didn't understand then, but I, I understood now." Yes. And I love those parts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and even then, I think there's a certain point where he's like, "I still don't understand this." Well, and I think it allows it gives the author an out too, and I, um, that he doesn't. Um, um, it gives the author an out for those times when, in the book, when he makes Shane larger than life, mm-hmm. we can blame it on the fact that it, this he he's these are a boy's impression of yeah. a, a man that he obviously idolizes or emulates, and so he's sure. so so that the fact that he's having that impression on the narrator makes sense. The fact that so so we can always begin to sort of wonder like. Well, maybe Shane's not larger than life. This is just a boy's impression of him, and so so we get to, he gets to play that game with us, the author that is. And so, right. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. It's like you said, yeah. that's a, that's a great that's a great way of um, framing something where you can tell these stories. And, mm-hmm. um, that's right. So, yeah. um, so the the book starts with Bobby leaning up against a post, um, and he sees Shane in the distance coming, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, as Shane uh, passes by. Uh, it's not described in this part, but the house is better looking than almost any building in the area. Like you can mm-hmm. tell that uh, Joe Schaefer, his dad, had spent a lot of time and care making this uh, a very pristine part of land. He's a farmer, and he's uh, trying to make uh, a living just selling smaller herds of mm-hmm. cow. Mm-hmm. Um, but th- there's a part in the book that goes on, goes on to describe the house and how it's painted and it has shingles mm-hmm. and. Um, it's cool because uh, Jack Schaefer actually, when he wrote this book, he'd never been out west. Mm-hmm. He, grew, I think, he was born and grew up in Ohio, mm-hmm. and uh, but he described uh, making shingles back then 
uh, they would have taken a, a stump and they would have used a thing called a fro. And it's a blade that's on a, a you have a wooden handle and it's a blade, a long blade, and you'd put it on there and you'd have to hammer it. And you would hammer uh, it through the stump and then you would turn it a little bit and hammer it and you'd make those shingles by hand. Hmm. And he mentions how he helped his dad make the shingles. Oh, okay. And that would have been a lot of work essentially for something that just would have, I mean, it would have given you a better roof, but not to where it was worth the worth the kind of work. Um, the point that they're making is that um, Joe did all this work to make his wife happy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so. Uh, there's a line where he's like, uh, he says, Pawn, I would do anything to make her happy mm -hmm. or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, so they're, they're kind of establishing that she is also like, um, she's also, like she's a worth, she's worth doing things for. Mm -hmm. She's worth the hard work because um, one thing it seems like modern writers don't get was how to write good women, okay. good female yeah. characters. It's like they have to be keeping up with the men. Oh, and I this is a good yeah. example of a well-written female character who is, she doesn't have to do that. I see. And you respect her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I bring all that to say, like, yes. so Shane sees this area, because Shane is very, very observant. So he sees how nice this house is and this property is compared to, again, every other area around them. And um, <clears throat> he asks for a drink of water. And before Bobby can answer, Joe answers and says, you can have all the water you want. Mm -hmm. um, so Shane goes and gets water for his horse and then water for himself, which, mm -hmm. again, kind of shows that Shane takes care of, you know, like um, if you're out in the wilderness in the West, your horse was what kept you alive. Mm -hmm. So they would take care of their horses yeah, to make yeah. sure because if, if you faint, there's a good chance your horse could still get you to somewhere safe. Oh, you know, if your horse were to faint, then you were, you were yeah. just in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but uh Anyway, um, so Shane takes care of his horse first, which I, 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 I that had to be like a deliberate detail. Oh, too. I, I would think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, before uh, Shane, he, he gets a flower from the garden. He puts mm, in his yeah, hat and yeah. Jack, uh, Joe, Joe says he's uh, he finds that interesting because he's never seen a guy who put that kind of thought to his appearance, mm -hmm. which, again, yeah. this is a time in the West where men didn't have that luxury. Usually mm -hmm. they were literally just trying to make sure they had enough you know, to, to mm. eat that year. Yeah, right. Um, so, uh, and, and especially if the only yeah. people you're encountering are, are cattlemen and, and homesteaders. I mean, they're going to have, yeah. these are people that are kind of having a, um, yeah, they're, they're not going to be overly concerned about uh, um, refi refinery. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. In fact, they, they probably wouldn't have understood why like if you were, if you walked around with a flower in your hat, they'd probably take you as some sort of weakling or something <laughs> like that. Very, very possibly, yeah. Uh, anyway, so, um, so Shane gets invited to stay the night in their uh, in their barn mm -hmm. and eat, eat um, they'd feed him and stuff. Um, so he agrees, and then the next day, um, it's raining, so they convince him to stay a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, then a salesman comes to the uh, oh, right. yeah. to the house, and he's going to sell um, Joe a bit of farming equipment, but he's charging him like a hundred bucks. And Shane mentions that he saw that at a store for 60 mm -hmm. And the salesman insults Shane. Uh, by the way, the entire time they're mentioned is they talk about how Shane's movements like scare them. And, and Bobby doesn't understand why it's so scary to see that. In fact, when, um, when Joe invites Shane to stay, um, Shane's turning and leaving and heading towards the trail. And oh, Joe yeah. calls out and says, "Why are you in such a hurry?" And she turns around so fast. Yeah. And it's just like, "Oh, this is uh, this guy's dangerous." But, yeah, but, yeah. But Bobby doesn't understand that, and I think Joe totally understands. What's yeah, going he's on. he's uh, he, he's familiar with this type of characters. He, yeah. he kind of reveals yeah. later on. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, then the salesman is um, essentially Shane's called him a liar to his face, mm -hmm. and the salesman is insulted by that, and he starts insulting Shane. And Shane stands up and kind of silences him. Mm -hmm. And then Joe kind of comes in as a peacemaker here mm -hmm. and uh, tells the saleskeeper, like, you know, he, he essentially says, okay, look, I'll give you essentially $80 because 60 for the price and then profit and mm -hmm. all in it. And so $80. And, um, and he says he'll take Shane's word any day of the year. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So Shane then says, oh, Sorry, I'm going to backtrack here because Joe is showing Shane the property. Shane this property, and the reason why I mentioned that was so pristine is because there's one stump that's behind the barn, mm. and that's like the one kind of thing marring the property, mm -hmm. like the one thing that doesn't look like it's meant to be there. Right. Yeah. Um, 
And they've mentioned that usually when Joe gets mad, he goes and works on it with an axe. But mm-hmm. it just, you know, it's, it's something where it's like it's it's in the way, but it's not so much in the way that mm-hmm. it needs to be gone now. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, so um, after Joe takes Shane's side, um, Shane says he's got to pay his debts. And this is kind of one of the big first set pieces in the book where Shane and Joe work together to remove the stump. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so uh, Shane mentions that He's got to repay his debts. Mm-hmm. Um, what mm-hmm. debt do you think Shaden was talking about there? Yeah, that, that, in fact, that that comes up as a question for um, for for Bob. Or uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so because he says like, oh, like, well, we give food to people all the time. Mm-hmm. We're not worried about that. And, and Joe's like, it's not about the food. Yeah, know? right. And so it's uh, but it's just the debt of uh, trust that he's um, uh, he, he's paying, kind of repaying the honor of being trusted. I, that's what I think, at least. Mm-hmm. That's what, kind of how we t- talk about it, I think, in the classroom. This, uh, the, the fact that uh, Joe had confidence in him, even against this... Uh, uh, against the, the guy the, he's known the, yeah, for, Ledger, yeah, for, obviously, a long time. Yeah, but he's he, uh, Joe's been able to size him up and put confidence and trust mm-hmm. in his integrity, and so he's uh, he's honored by that. Once again, you have a kind of... Uh, um, you have, you, you have a, 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 I, I think, a... Again, it's hard not to think of it as being intentional, but a suggestion of uh, faith in Christ that you have that those who honor me, I will honor, mm-hmm. and that uh, faith is a motivator. I don't like you thinking of it that way, but uh, not a, a but, but God rewards faith, and that's the, that, and that is, uh, yeah, I, motivator is the wrong choice of words, but but I think that God is uh, so delighted in faith that He honors it and uh, rewards it, and so you have this, um, and so I think that's what you kind of see that with what Shane's doing, yeah, yeah, um, and. Just a kind of perspective here. We're both Christians, so um, and sometimes you don't see God honoring your faith. It is not very clear to you. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying. So sometimes you, you're right. God does honor faithful people, but sometimes it's not always clear to us until years down, or sometimes an eternity before we realize just how much God has honored that bit of faithfulness mm-hmm. to Him. Um, I, I agree with that. Everything you said. I also think that. In my head canon, because again, this is just me and printing that, I think that's the first time somebody's insulted Shane, that Shane didn't have to fight or kill. Oh, interesting. I haven't looked at it that way. Yeah, that's really good. Because yeah. um, you kind of see this later on too, but Shane is trying to step away from his gunfighter. Right, yeah. Because yeah. right. even when he's riding into the valley, he doesn't have his gun. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, which we'll get into that later. But yeah, so to me, I think that's the first time. I like that. Because like like, cause usually if you would insult somebody back then, and they beat you up, you wouldn't go to jail. Like, they wouldn't go to jail for beating you up because, like, you know, the, the people would be like, well, you insulted them, so what mm-hmm. do you expect? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so that would be, that was just one of my readings of it. No, that's I, good. I think you're right, too, about the fact that having known Shane for such a short time, that Joe put it, was willing to trust him and, like, measure him up as a as a good man. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. also, like, I, I'm, I do think that that's one of the first times someone else has fought a battle for Shane. Yeah. That's good. And, and, and That's really obviously, good. Shane could have handled this guy. Like, there's, right. there's no doubt about that. That Shane was the dang, like the, the the more deadly one in this yeah. book. But um, but he would have had to have done so in a way that would have been going back to the past. He was trying to escape. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Joe Joe prevented that for him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah. So then at this point, um, Joe um, asks Shane if he's running from anything, mm. and Shane answers not in the way that you're not in the way that you're thinking. Yeah. So, meaning he's not a criminal. Right, <laughs> he's not yeah. running from the law. Yeah, yeah. So then Shane, um, Joe offers Shane a job. Mm-hmm. And uh, Shane accepts it. And uh, he goes to, oh, no, no. Shane is, uh, sorry, that, I'm fast forwarding it. Um, so Shane and uh, starts chomping at this root uh, from the stump. And once he gets through, he just keeps chopping at it. So Joe eventually goes and gets an axe, and they both start chopping at this root. Um this is an iconic scene. I I, I don't rem- I remember the scene being in the movie. Mm-hmm. I just don't remember how they handled it. But in the book, it takes up a couple of chapters. Oh, okay, yeah. And I know it's a big part of the at least a chapter. Part. Yeah, at least that whole chapter is there. It's there. But but the, but the, I think the stump is introduced even prior to that chapter. Yeah, it is because like it, like yeah. when they're exploring the the yeah. farm. Like, again, that's yeah. why the farm is so well put together, and you just have this one eyesore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, but so, um, so. What what would you uh, when you're when you're going over the the stump in your class like what do you talk about like yeah, well it's it's one of the most um, uh, in my 
um, outside of the, the the symbols, you know, the the symbols sprinkled throughout that we talked about, whether it's names or, or characters um, being alluding to this or that. We have uh, I I kind of talk about it as being one of the two most important symbols in the in the book, and so the um, and I may be wrong about that. I mean, maybe there's more than just and there are more symbols than two, but mm -hmm. maybe there are two. There, maybe there's a third or more. Uh, really important symbols that I, I don't give the right emphasis to, but but the um, the the stump within the narrative I think it represents it's it symbolizes Fletcher and the and and to a, made put that more broadly the the um, the conflict between the the cattle the cattlemen and the farmers um, in that the cattlemen were there first Fletcher was there first. Um, the, the farmers are coming, but there's this old stump that's kind of in the way mm -hmm. and they're trying to, so I, and he, they even, there's even a physical similarity between them when they describe Fletcher and describe the stump. You can, I, I don't know that exact words are used, but you can see that there's a, a comparison mm -hmm. that seems intended, but there's, um, uh, but I think larger than that, and I, I, maybe I'm getting ahead, not larger than that, but maybe, uh, uh, how do I say it? Um, kind of. Over top that it, structurally, um, there so that which would be I guess underneath more than over top. But structurally, I, I liken it to, and I don't know that this would be direct, but a lot of things are said about the mythic, uh, the mythic aspects of Shane, and, and going back to um, the well, the, the the epic, the epic heroes, mm -hmm. and uh, Shane I think is, is is almost kind of like a modern epic, and is sometimes in class because um, it, it, within the curriculum we try to look at Beowulf. Uh, we don't always get to, but Beowulf prior to the book, and I, I kind of see, and I don't know if this is intentional or not, I never read anything where Jack Schaefer responded to it one way or the other, but there's, it's almost structured like Beowulf in that there are three great challenges in the book. Okay. And so, in a sense, the stump is is uh, Shane's Grindel. And so, hmm. but um, there, there there's a way to maybe set that aside in the fact that he overcomes the stump with, um, with uh, Joe's help, although you could say that within Beowulf, I mean, Beow there's a, there are some similarities that you could draw between Shane and Beowulf, just like you could between Shane and um, and Christ as a Christ mm -hmm. figure. But you could say the same thing that Beowulf himself is a is a Christ figure in that story. So he, he, it looks to me, and I guess I'm getting a little off topic here, but it looks to me that uh, Schaefer is blending. He's taking both um, uh, ancient myth and and Christian gospel and mm -hmm. and kind of weaving them together in this one character and the, and kind of doing um double duty and justice to both stories and um by, by doing justice to the stories i just i guess i just mean like there's there's a it read a certain way there's there's uh reverence paid to both mm -hmm. and so but um and so so back to the stump the stump is uh um, and what, what, what makes me think about this when I'm talking to students about it is that we go back to where Marion at one point calls it the, calls that stump that monster. Mm -hmm. And so it gives it this sort of mythic uh, villainy that you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect of a stump. Right. And, so, right. so. Um, and <clears throat> this is also like one of the, um, this is a task that Joe is up to. I mean, he gets it done much faster without Shane, but mm -hmm. he would have gotten that stump, got, uh, that stump would have been taken care of eventually. Yeah, yeah um, so. which we'll we'll keep talking about that because I think the things that we'll, we'll keep we'll keep going on that, but there's there will come a point where jo the task becomes bigger than Joe, but Joe himself is depicted as like an incredible man. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, that's good. Yeah. So it's just uh, yeah. anyway, um, so yeah, so they they essentially work throughout the rest of the day to remove the stump. It's a really well written scene. It's it's. If I, I'm, I'm not a writer, but if I were like a writer saying like, hey, uh, how would you have to make uh, two guys chopping away at a stump exciting? Uh, mm. He pulls it oh, off. Yeah, like, yeah, right, yeah, there you go. That's good. So, yeah. yeah like it's, so, a, it's a tough task. Like, like, yeah. I'd be like, well, they chopped yeah. up the stump. And it, I, I mean, anyway, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And part of that's probably because of the boys' excitement, too. Mm, right. Um, yeah. Again, talking about that narrative advice, why it's important to be told from Bobby's perspective. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you know, when you see your your dad achieving something that he's been working on for a while, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah. and, and, and it, the way that, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. One is in the way that they kind of come at it. There's a there's a scene in which they pause, and I think it's even that they um, they the the biscuit that she brings out to them or the biscuits mm -hmm. and how they they eat those. But the, the whole thing's done in silence. There's just this sort of this um, th there's this uh, bond being made. 
And you could, again, see maybe a Christian parallel there with uh, the, the, the meal together. It's not really mm -hmm. a Last Supper type of meal, but you have this sort of communion between mm -hmm. them. Um, and so, but, but may, I want to be careful when I'm making comparisons that I'm not just reaching for anything. So, you know, but, but at the same time, it's, uh, and then of course there's the, the, the sharing scene where mm -hmm. uh, they kind of share that last biscuit by cutting it in half. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yep. Uh, it's also showing that they work well together. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and also uh, Schaefer does a good job at contrasting Joe and Shane. Uh, Joe is depicted as this big, broad guy. Mm -hmm. Again, not, not overweight, but broad. Like mm -hmm. He's muscles, and um, so his, his strikes are more like powerful, but Shane's are more precise, and that's like, mm -hmm. uh, so... Um, because Shane is described as kind of a slender, like a, a skinnier guy, but it, he's got so much power because he's very precise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, the, the, there is a, a big, a great physical distinction. But besides all that, though, character-wise, they they have so much in common. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, so the there's a scene beforehand where um, Marion is ask, asking Shane what what fashion the girls are wearing. Mm -hmm. And so she puts her hat in a way, yeah. and she comes out, and she's like, well, aren't you guys going to look at me? And, you know, Shane compliments her, and, and, and Joe is just like, you know that I think you're, you know, the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. And, and, but, the, but he's focused, like, right? He's focused on a task, and um, sometimes you just get focused on something, and it's like distractions are just like, yeah, okay. You know? <laughs> but she gets mad, and she goes to bake an apple pie. Mm. Um, and uh, then when she has the pie in the oven, the uh, stump is essentially there at the point where it's, pretty much almost out there uh, there's like a tap root left and mm. so uh jack is pushing against it and shane's striking it um and and throughout the seat so the, the stump is finally removed and the the pie is burned and i i'm, I'm interested in like why this was included in this book uh, but she goes and she re-bakes her pie mm -hmm. um, and again i'm not doing the scene justice I, I really do recommend that you guys read the book for yourself mm. um but um Shane, uh, there's there's tension because she's kind of upset at them because they didn't notice her in her hat. Mm -hmm. uh, she makes them dinner, but then she makes the pie, and then she um, she she serves it to them. And Shane picks up the pie and he he chews it and he's like, uh, "This is the best dump I've ever had," or something. Mm -hmm. He uses right, yeah. something to that effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think about that scene? Because like I have actually not. I mean, I'm I, I'm I'm, I'm kind of curious on what what your reading on that scene would be. Oh well, I when he well he by likening it likening that pie to her stump just as you know she had to bake the pie again she wasn't going to just accept defeat right with that first pie that burned That's good and so she was she was going to do it again until it got until it got done mm -hmm. and so like they were doing with the stump and i think what they're showing is that she's cut from the same cloth that they are yeah yeah and so she's, oh, she's sort of like the just as they are um in care as they are in character as men she is in character as a woman so and then not accepting defeat that kind of shows like at, well, well, how the like that kind of goes to where the what Shane does at the end, so oh, like not right, accepting yes, defeat. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll, I guess we'll kind of pull back to yeah, that yeah, a yeah, little bit. Yeah. But that's great. I, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I again, I, I've I've read the book three or four times now, and um, I, I like it. But uh, that's great. That yeah, mm -hmm. you're showing that. That's that's good enough. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, thanks. Appreciate yeah, that's that. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's that's how we kind of look at it that way. Because I, I think the the author is it. He he wants us to see that there's a. Um, that there's a, a likeness among them. I mean, mm -hmm. I, which I think under undergirds the, um, I mean, if that's the right word, but um, kind of, it, it has much to do with the attraction, which maybe I'm getting ahead, but between mm -hmm. some of the- Oh yeah, the no, that's yeah. fine, we can get that. I mean, yeah. hopefully you've read the book before you're watching our analysis yeah, yeah, right. because like, it, it just goes up, like the book just gets better from here. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and so, if not, we're gonna just spoil everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's a short book, guys. I mean, yeah. it's this is uh, like 150 pages, and it's they're they're not big pages, and the words are it's not small print. So yeah, and you could probably read this in the afternoon if you, I'm a slow reader, and I almost got through it in an afternoon. And, and interestingly enough, I bring this up with my students because many of them have never read um, uh, Shane before, and so or, or excuse me, never read a western before. Mm -hmm. And so I like to point out the fact that we're not just reading a western; we're sort of reading well, we are reading the western that this has been voted the uh, by. Um, by Western writers was voted the best uh, Western novel of all time, as far as they were, uh, as, as as far as I don't know all the ones that were interviewed, but there was a survey taken and, mm. and they voted Shane as like the the best Western, no, not the hotel, but the, yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I've read I, most of the Westerns that I've read would be Louis L'Amour, um, mm. and I, I liked Louis L'Amour. I think he's great. Um, 
so I, I'm not the uh, expert on all Western novels. M- Mia, not um, at all. But again, this is but this yeah. is in both of our top five favorite novels. Yeah, yeah. She's the top four. Yeah, so, so. Um, that would be. Uh, yeah. We we both think very highly of this book. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And it just well, it does so much in such a little space. It's yeah. amazing. Oh yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, there's actually a Dr. Seuss quote I heard um, that I think applies to this. He, he says, uh, "He who writes more, the writer who writes more than he needs, uh, creates a chore for the reader who reads." Mm. And um, I, I'm actually getting to the point where I really I'm starting to hate the abridged version of this book because there's an abridged version out there, mm. and the stuff they take out I actually think really subtracts from the books. I don't think there's anything you can remove from yeah. this. Yeah, that's yeah. separate book that was had no need to be. Uh, yeah, because it's like a two hour audio book, <laughs> and it'd be two and a half hours. So they they like they they really <laughs> sacrifice a lot to save half an hour. Yeah, time. Right, and and the thing about yeah. short books is that uh, the authors the, the, we again and and high school English classes we talk about this like the 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 shorter the book the more precise you have to be so like mm-hmm. if it's if you have a short story the, the economy the, every single word matters with novels you can you can afford a little uh, what I sometimes refer to as chicken fat you can just yeah. kind of have some extraneous bits that not that they are completely they're not irrelevant or they wouldn't make it into the final cut but they're not as important as other features of the story where you want to focus where the shorter the story it's like you're um you know, it's, it's, it, all, everything has to matter most. It's like the parts of a clock. You take out one part, and then all of a sudden the clock doesn't work anymore. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. I, I would agree with that. Um, yeah. So, uh, and that, I think that's one reason why I like um, pulps so much is because mm. they're short. They have to be, like, uh, pretty much just get to the point. And, mm. um, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, yeah. Um, so, so, it's after this scene with the stump that uh, Joe offers Shane a job, and uh, Shane takes him up on it. He goes to the store, and he's wearing kind of these darker clothes, his kind of his mm-hmm. gunfighter clothes before this point, mm-hmm. and a dark hat, and he switches to look more like a farmhand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, this is also the point where they start introducing the trouble that um, that that the farmers are having. Uh, there's a big rancher, and you mentioned him earlier. Um mm-hmm. Fletcher? Fletcher, thank yeah. you. Well, they call him something um, else in the book, I think, don't they? Or do they it's Fletcher's. They use Fletcher, too. Do they use Fletcher? Yeah. Okay, in the book? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What am I, what am I, oh, right. no, they say Riker. It's Riker in the movie. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. No. So, I don't know why, but. This uh, kid must be, a, went, went to work for Starfleet, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Will Riker. Yeah. Yeah. He moved to Alaska, yeah, yeah, you know. Riker. He just pretended to get shoot by Jane yeah, because yeah. of <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, so, but, uh, but, so, um. Fletcher, yeah. So mm-hmm. Fletcher uh, is mentioned at this point where he's uh, he essentially was the first cattle person there, like then uh, really the big one, and mm-hmm. um, and he kind of wants to run the whole valley as far as that goes. Mm-hmm. And the the um, Joe wasn't the first homesteader that came, but he's the reason why they've st- stuck it out as long as they have. Yeah, right. He's kind of the the anchor yeah. for the other side. Yeah, they kind of mentioned before that they hired a, somebody to work for Joe because he said that he's even though he's a super hard worker, there's more work than he can really keep up with. Mm-hmm. And so they hired a hand, and Fletcher's men ran that guy away. Yeah. And Joe knows that Shane won't be ran away as easily. Right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so they kind of point this out, and uh, Shane accepts. Um, again, trying to... I, I, he's trying to give it his best attempt to put that gunfighter life behind him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Uh, he becomes a farmer, which is interesting because he kind of uses the word farmer as an insult later. Shane does. Yeah, hmm. um, I can't. I can't think of that part, but uh, I don't. But I don't doubt you. But I'm he, sure. he's like he even says at this point after he's removed the stomp that um, he has new context for the word farmer. Oh, okay. okay. But at, at, there's a, it's interesting because there's a point later on where he says like uh, like. He he calls somebody like a farmer, but it's like in a negative way. Mm. Um, but we'll get to that. That's um, that's anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, so Shane's offered. So he's given the job, and then um, so so this is kind of at summer, and it's interesting because as the season progresses and it gets closer and closer to winter, it feels like tensions kind of raise. Mm-hmm. So because Fletcher's not in in the valley during the summertime. That's right. And yeah. so, uh, and, and, and and Bobby mentions that when Fletcher's not there, they're friendly with the ranchers, like the, yeah. the cowhands. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they they kind of was... respect that they're they're little rambunctious, but the people respect their liveliness. And mm-hmm. 
But yeah. were you going to say? Oh, no, I was, I was just thinking that even, I think somewhere in the book it talks about that. Like that was the, uh, that summer was really idyllic. Like with, with, uh, with uh, Shane working on the, on the farm. Yeah. And it was just really like the, uh, a wonderful summer. Is, mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and, and there's that age too where just in most kids don't appreciate, no, no kid appreciates it when they're in that age. But there's that point where you're old enough to have fun and go on adventures. But you're still too young to have worries. Yeah, right. And yeah. so that's um, right. so Bobby's at that point too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but and and again, that's something that nobody appreciates when they're in. But then yeah, when you look back and you're like, man, that was a great time. Well, as a child, you think it's going to go on forever. You don't yeah. realize that that's a, just a special moment in your life. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, so then Fletcher comes back and he's gotten several big contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, so he starts talking about how he's going to need all the land and mm -hmm. uh, he's, the, the, ran, the farmers have to go. Yeah. Um, and so uh, the first thing they're trying to do is they're going to try to run Shane off. And uh, so there's um, a tongue that gets broken um, mm -hmm. for, for bailing hay. And uh, they decide they need to take that to town to have the blacksmith. Uh, he says weld it. Uh, obviously, at this point, there wouldn't have been welding. Uh, he means forge welding it. Okay. And that would have been getting both of the pieces essentially white hot and hammering them together so the metal would essentially re reconnect okay that's good I, uh, I love how you can bring those kinds of insights into the so, into the details that yeah. i overlook it's it's awesome. a skill and it's it, again it's something that's not it's not super important to the plot but it just it, it's a reason for shane to go to town mm. and it's a good enough reason um and even in that time a blacksmith would have been very crucial to western towns because they're the people who shoe the horses they're the people who make the hand tools or make the nails i mean just everything a town would have needed mm -hmm. a blacksmith would you know could provide right. usually blacksmiths also had room for stables for people to put their horses in if they were staying over okay um anyway yeah, so just, just, a, just a cool bit of no, western pillar of the community the yeah, blacksmith. yeah yeah they would have so, been yeah um, gotcha. at that time yeah. and, and, and again that's uh they most western towns were so like uh, most of them had 20 or 30 people like you know so like a blacksmith would have been the only guy who could have done that, you know, mm -hmm. to get the town going. Um, and, and again, those towns, those people would have been, um, everybody was crucial. Like, you know, everybody did something that was crucial. Mm -hmm. But a blacksmith was very crucial to those, uh, to those yeah. people. So, so when, uh, I'm glad that you have that insight into it because when I think of those towns, I only, uh, you know, I just think of that as one of the one of the characters in the town. I don't really think about his central role. Mm -hmm. To the community, so and, and I'm biased too because I, I blacksmith as a hobby. Right. So. Sure. No, but but I think but there's adjust, appreciation. Yeah. But you think yeah. about like nails, like they were made by hand at right. that time, yeah. and um, a blacksmith would have um, a good blacksmith could have made like one nail for every heat. So they would have heated a piece of metal, made the nail, and then by the time it was cooled down, the nail would have been done. Hmm. And uh, it's it's interesting. It's, yeah. it's fun to watch blacksmiths work who know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Uh, Again, the blacksmith isn't even named in this story, but it's mm. just I, this is the reason for Shane to get to town. Okay. Uh, so Shane goes to town, um, and I think he meant to go alone, and Bobby follows him secretly. Okay. Because it seems I, I know Bobby does that several times. Yeah. Where he follows yeah. Shane to town I'm secretly, to but the, um, it seems like if if I'm remembering correctly that this is what well, the first time he goes into town he uh, doesn't everyone no, go into town? no he invites um, no the no. He, the time that everybody goes into town is coming up here. Oh, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. So when Shane goes into town, oh, he invites right. he Bobby. Gets, I don't know where you are. Because he tells Bobby yeah. he's going to buy him a knife, yeah. which he does. Uh -huh. But um, so Bobby uh, is, they're hanging out at the general store because the general store and the saloon are connected. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and the general store is talking about another thing that would have been a pillar of a community. <laughs> but uh, yeah. so well, the, Which, by the way, I think the movie gets quite right. It seems yeah. that, that, that the way they, it pretty much looks like. Well, and, and it's, it's cool because like how can... Um, a boy, especially from good parents, like the good parents wouldn't let their kid go into a saloon. Right. Yeah. Like, how do you get to where the boy sees what's going on? Oh, that's awesome. Actually, I never uh, even thought about that. It's, it's like, oh, well, just have problem. them connected. Like, yeah. it's just a really uh, something that makes sense. Yeah, it does make so, sense. Yeah. Um, anyway, so so they're connected, and there's like a door in between, and Bobby's not supposed to go into the saloon, but he he has a place where he would, he can see what's going on in the saloon. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the Chris, uh, good, good name, by the way. Yeah, right, yeah, Chris. <laughs> yeah, Chris shows yeah, up. Yeah. Um, and there's another unnamed character they both ride in because because uh, at this point there's um cow hands that are keeping an eye on the farmers mm -hmm. they use excuses like oh they're just washing the herd but as soon as uh shane heads to town the, the cow hand rides back to to report that you mm -hmm. know so so chris is um he's presented as you know this young kind of brave um likable person um and so he comes in and it's there's a cool scene where he comes in with backup the guy takes one look at shane and nope's out of there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
And it's it's not clear. It's not like out really stated. Do you think the person knows Shane? Or does he just have enough experience to know I'm not messing with that guy? I'd have to go back and take a look at that. Uh, because like scene. Chris asked if, he, if the guy knows Shane. He's like, I never said that. Yeah, I think it's... Um, I, I, to me, I get the impression that he's aware of who Shane is. Uh, I, I would I would agree with that. Yeah. Analysis. But it's kind of open-ended where you... Yeah, can, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, Shane doesn't even know. So it's like Shane essentially defeats a guy without even knowing Right, right. yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so Chris goes in there because Chris is young and doesn't understand. Um, mm-hmm. And he goes in there and essentially challenges Shane and insults him. And um, Shane's getting ready to take the bait. But then he just he says, like, this is the first time it's described as Shane looking up at the mountains. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of the thousand yard stare. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say about the mountains? Just to- Well, when you mentioned the thousand yard stare, that reminded me of another thing we talk about in class about the book. And that's... Uh, uh, it's interesting since I don't know how that topic was discussed at the time when Shane was published, but it's um, he suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, and so I would say that's yeah. True. And so I don't know if that has a if that's a feature. I'd have to go back again and look at that passage, but um, yeah, I think that since you mentioned that that thousand yard stare, I wonder is that how you interpret it that it's a feature of his his personal trauma? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess I'll just have to go with that. I don't know how okay. to comment on beyond that. But anyway, so Shane. Uh, backs away from the fight um and i it's more to protect chris than like his yeah, right. shane's obviously not afraid so he yeah. he's and he even says like his only problem is he's young yeah like, that's right. uh, yeah there, there's there's a, something about the characters like joe and and shane these these um key characters of of good character that they can recognize character in others pretty quickly mm-hmm. and they can kind of see like okay this is a good guy or this is not but whatever their faults might be they, they can mm-hmm. size a person up pretty fast yeah yeah so. yeah and see this is a another thing that the abridged version cut out but um shane um mentions he's like he was just following orders should i hate a guy for being brave right yeah, like, yeah. and i'm like that's yeah. a great that's a great part where shane's like you know uh, so so this brings some heat down, though, because uh, Chris tells everybody that Shane backed down from a fight. Yeah, he kind of he buffaloed him. That's yeah. how they say it in the film, I think. I don't think they say it in the book that way, but it kind of ran him off. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, Joe knows that, you know, is okay with what Shane did. He's not mad at Shane or anything. Right, because like he, he, he gets it. He's yeah. actually happy. And, and in, the book mentions how Shane's kind of more at peace now and a lot of the tension seems mm-hmm. like it's leaving him. And yeah. he's like, he seems like he's almost like in a better spot. So Shane doesn't care what people say about him. Joe can take it, what people are saying about him. Mm-hmm. Um, but Chris starts, uh, the, Chris mentions in the, in the saloon when he was confronting Shane that he smells pigs. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I don't think any of the people have pigs, it's not mentioned that they do, mm-hmm. but they're just, uh, they're just trying to say something. So, so now every time they see the, <clears throat> the farmers around they they like oh do you smell pigs and they're insulting and and the other people are getting bothered by this yeah, yeah. Um, which and then with um with that kind of falling on Shane that's kind of falling on Joe which yeah. is bothering Shane <laughs> right exactly so because he's the anchor of the farming community and so they and he and Shane is his hired man it's like that he's kind of the source of this this stigma that now they carry so yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, Shane finally decides to uh, do something about that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he rides into town and comes back 20 minutes later and says, your problems are, or your pigs are buried. Yeah, pigs are, yeah right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah. Uh, so then a guy comes in, and again, because this is told from Bobby's perspective, Bobby, here's what the guy said, essentially. Uh, Shane goes in there and um, gives Chris a, a soda pop. Mm-hmm. Um, and soda pop is the word they use. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and uh, essentially tries, tells him to drink it, and that's him challenging it. And Chris fights back and uh, doesn't even touch Shane and Shane just breaks his arm yeah. and knocks him out cold. Yeah. And you can tell Shane hates that. And then I, I think that's where the line is written where Marion is like, how could they do that? To, how could we do that to Shane? Mm, right. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah. she gets like, it's like a week of tranquility is what yeah, Shane has. Yeah. Like a week mm-hmm. of like, okay, I backed away. I might be able to break out of the mold, but then he can't. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that's where that part, let me actually, sure. I'm going to check cause I have that written down cause I really, because I no, think it's uh, that's not it. Because I think I know. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. because she says something about her. Look like what you did to Shane. Yep. Yeah, because she's talking about he he yeah, misunderstands her concern to be that for Chris, and he's like, well, yeah. Chris will be fine. Yeah, and then yeah. he's like, I'm so not talking about what. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that's at that point where she knows that Shane yeah. is uh, that 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 affected Shane, and that will affect Shane. It's interesting how they both have a different. Um, they, they, it's almost like they've divided. Like she can see Shane's. Uh, Joe sees Shane's strength, and and Marion sees his weakness in a way. Like yeah. Not, if you want to call it a weakness, but that his his vulnerability. His vulnerability. I yeah. think that's a better word. Yeah. yeah. And so she's. It's interesting how she has that insight, and then so so whereas Joe, there are things that Joe says. And uh, like when he's talking about how uh, Shane is his kind of man, and she's like, "Well, he's not like you at all. He dresses differently and talks differently." It's like, "Well, that's not what I meant." Like, right, what are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. And so, 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 but then when uh, she's like, "What we've done to Shane," like it, he thinks when she's concerned, he thinks she's concerned about Chris because she sees that vulnerability in Shane that he mm-hmm. doesn't see. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I kind of skipped over this earlier. There's a conversation between. Um, I, it's actually the first night that Shane stays in, and I, I deliberately skipped over because I wanted to bring it back here, um, where Marion and Joe are talking and they say essentially he's like the most dangerous man they've ever seen. Oh, yeah. And then Joe says, but we'll never have a safer man under our roof. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah my, once again, with the Christian analogy. Oh, go ahead no, and no, say. No, I want you to. Well, no, I was just thinking about what, uh, <coughs> it reminds me of that line of, at the end of um, um, uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, about like he's uh, he's not a, a tame lion. He's but like, he's no, a good but he lion. is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So. That, that's great. Yeah. Uh, and I like the, um, the idea of the dangerous man. Um, that's, um, you know, b- being harmless doesn't make you a good person. Right. Yeah. It's when you choose to not hurt people. It's when you have the strength and you choose not to use it to, to, to torment people. That's when you become a good man. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I really like that philosophy. And I think this book really captures that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, that's I, good. And what's that? What's that line that Joe says too when she talks about how she had never met a man like him before in that in that same chapter going back? And he says, "I suppose you wouldn't, not you know where you're from." And he said, uh, and she said something about as he uh, um, something. Joe says something about having encountered his kind before. He said, uh, and he. He he said a bad one's poison, but a good yeah. one is straight whiskey or something like that. Or but a good drink. one is um yeah um, I know what you're saying. Yeah, a bad one is uh, yeah, boy. I'll, I'll put it here. It's it's a good line. I'll yeah. I'll, I'll put it okay. I'll put it below on the screen yeah. on okay. post. Um, but yeah, so um, I think it's at this point where um, where Bob discovers that Sheen has a gun. Okay, and he's yeah, chosen yeah. not to wear it. Yeah. And um, so I'm just going to give a little bit of, because he talks about how even, um, like, he mentions in the book that the farmers wouldn't want to have colts on their hips at all times because of the, you know, the work that they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, realistically, colts were expensive uh, back then. I think they were $15, but, like, that was, pre, you know, like, in right. the 1800s, that would have been yeah. um, several months, like six months worth of wages or something like that. Um, I don't know if he when he talked about prices in here, I'm not sure if he was writing for his time, Jack Schaefer, or just was he thinking about the pre-inflation and you know money in the 1800s versus what would buy when he wrote that? Because at one point somebody's offered 300 bucks for their ranch and they offered Joe a thousand dollars, and that would have been a lot of money. Well, I think that. Then. Well, I'm, I'm it would have been a lot of money when he wrote the book too. Like when this book was oh, okay. a thousand dollars was a yeah, lot of money yeah, back then too, yeah. but. I, I, no. Unless it's just supposed to be this, um, you know, just just to how great a temptation was offered to Joe mm-hmm. and that he you know, resisted. But yeah, yeah, sure. So maybe I don't, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. so the point is, most farmers would have needed a gun that would have put food on the table. They could have used for protecting their house, and also for fighting okay. if they needed to. So and something they could afford. So most farmers would have um, a, usually a single shot shotgun was what you could mm-hmm. afford, a double barrel if you wanted the luxury model. So um, Samuel Colt was a brilliant marketer, and he sold more revolvers east in the east than he did in the west. Oh, okay. He marketed it as a gun that won the west when, oh, and when you had to be rich to afford one of those. I see. Interesting. So yeah. uh, anyway, but, you know, it, it's what it is. It, it, it's fine. This is, the, the Colt revolver is an iconic gun of the west, and I'm okay with people using it in imagery. But historically, it's just interesting how you really wouldn't encounter a lot of people who carried I see. those guns. Interesting. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting detail. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, if I if I have the opportunity to teach Shane again, I'll I'll bring that up. <laughs> yeah, it's so, fun. Yeah. It's just fun when you um when you actually realize uh, okay, uh, it's like Stetton hats, Stetsons, Stetsons. 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 If I can talk, yeah. Uh, my, my anyway, um, 
those were again mainly sold in the east as the cowboy hat, and and they were they were good hats, but most cowboys couldn't afford them. Oh, I understand. Okay. So yeah, that makes um, sense. And, and in fact, um, before denim was invented, most of them wore like their old war uniforms. Interesting. The Civil War. That's what they would have worn to work mm. with and work in, according yeah. to Louis L'Amour. Yeah. Um, and then when denim was invented, it was that's why it was invented. It was a cheap, water resistant material that mm. it wouldn't hold water like cotton does. I see. You know, so. Yeah. Again, that's according to Louis Lamore. So, uh, and he he was pretty real well read about the time. Yeah, so this was his bread and butter. So I imagine. Probably yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think um, at one time when he was alive, he had the largest collection of newspapers that were printed in the Old West. Oh, very cool. So that's neat. Anyway, yeah. anyway. Um, so so Bob's aware that Shane has a gun, and it's described as like, uh, well, okay. So in the book, he finds the gun and he looks at it, he admires it, and then he puts it back. Mm-hmm. And I think in the movie, Shane catches him looking at the gun. I think you're right, yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of get into, we're, we're reviewing the book here. Okay, okay, <laughs> but yeah. anyway, uh, so he, he notices that it's a very pretty gun. He says it's black, almost blued, which would, would have been blued metal. Mm-hmm. It, it's very, it looks, yeah, it's black, but it has that like hint of blue to it. Mm-hmm. And it would have had um, ivory handles, which it would have been a very beautiful gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, Shane's like, he talks about his boots and his belt where it had um, leather working done to mm-hmm. it. Which, right, yeah. Probably again, absolutely, you know, mm-hmm. like gorgeous stuff to look at. Yeah. But um, anyway, so um, later on, this is one of my favorite lines from the book, and it's my personal philosophy when it comes to arms and stuff. But Jack is playing with a broken gun that was given to him, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and I, I'm <laughs> he says the barrel was split. I'm willing to bet the shop owner probably would have filed down the firing pin too. The right. firing pin was what would have struck the bullet to oh, make it go off. I see. Okay. So. so yeah. Uh, if, if I was going to give a gun to a kid as a toy, I would have filed it off. I see. So I'm, I'm guessing they would have too. Right. That's fine. Um, right. But he's uh, he's pretending that like he's shooting Indians, yeah. and uh, he sees Shane, and he thinks Shane's going to make fun of him. Mm-hmm. And Shane just asks him like, "How many how did he get?" And you know, he's like, "Oh, bang, that makes seven. Um, so then Shane kind of gives him a lesson on guns, um, on how to shoot and point and stuff, which comes up later. Uh, but Shane says that a gun is a tool like a shovel or uh, he says something else, like a shovel or an ax or something like that. But then he said, it's as good or as bad as the person that uses it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. but, yeah, yeah, that's, and that's, uh, that's quite a message. I think it probably resonates uh, then and now. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's true for, again, being the dangerous person, but you're being a good person right. who yeah. chooses not to use that danger to harm other people, yeah. uh, innocent people. So. And I love that scene uh, too, when it, it, how important it is to, to uh, Bob that, uh, that not only that Shane doesn't make fun of him, but um, it kind of, I can't remember what he says, but it's something that um, kind of, uh, he, one of them is the line you mentioned, but I thought there was another line as well that um, that makes him feel supported or um, that, that, that I don't know, there's a word I'm looking for, but uh, kind of confirms what he's doing, mm-hmm. uh, the, this play acting. And so and he, I, I think that's one of the things too that, um, that Shane is, besides all these other things that it is and does, is a, it's a coming of age novel, mm-hmm. and so you have um, so the, these steps. How how Shane is an important figure in Bob's transition to manhood, and mm-hmm. of course, a, a coming of age novel. It's not necessarily that he has to make that full journey in the course of the story, but he he hits some important milestones. Yeah, yep. and so and so this is one the fact that he's he's meeting a man like Shane who understands that uh, a, a a boy is a man in the making. Yeah. And so he speaks to that every, you know, every important opportunity. He doesn't miss it. Sure. So. Yeah. Well, and there's a, a part before that's mentioned where, where Bobby look, well, used to look up to the, uh, the, the cow hands. And used mm-hmm. to think that they right. Were cool. He's like, yeah. obviously his father is his hero, but he's like, oh, I'd like to do what they do for a little bit and run, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he meets Shane and Shane like essentially blows those guys out of the water mm-hmm. as far right. as like, yeah. you know, that, that, that becomes this new pedestal, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's you're right about that too. Where Shane acknowledges that he's growing and, and he speaks to him mm-hmm. in that way, which mm-hmm. is a great, great. Yeah, thing. it's a lesson to, to 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 fathers too, or and teachers, and mm-hmm. all those who haven't earned a place where we have the opportunity to speak to to youth. That um, uh, sometimes those 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 little moments are important to get right. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, okay, and, and, and for Shane, being a larger than life character who's mythic in stature, <laughs> yeah. never misses one. Unfortunately, we as parents and teachers may, might. Yeah. <laughs> but so, so uh, um, I think that's the other reason why this book is important to be told from Bobby's perspective, is because Shane is 
so perfect, he wouldn't be that interesting of a character if it were just like told from his perspective. You're exactly right. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because in, because once again, we can kind of forgive uh, this, um, you know, his, his perfection, and we can kind of excuse it mm -hmm. by being uh, that this is the the perceptions of a boy who, you know, they only think in these sort of strict dualities and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. So that that's how again, where um, Shane is kind of an overpowered character. But it's handled so well mm -hmm, that right. it's not. It overpowered characters can get boring. Yeah, if you're, yeah. Um, I've seen them handled well poorly throughout <laughs> a lot of, especially modern media. But um, and come yeah. to think of it, maybe that's when when you think back of the movie, maybe that's why the movie does um, de-escalate him <laughs> in you know in such a way because they don't have the opportunity to tell it just from Bob's point of view. Like as audience members, we're seeing the story played out for real. So we, kept, we obviously it's Bob is still uh, Joey in the movie, but he's still an important character, and uh, it, it, the this, the narration references through him a lot. But it's not, um, but still we we can't get away from being the the audience mm. seeing those things actually yeah. on the screen. So uh, after Shane beats Chris um, and kind of gets the uh, like the, the, this is kind of um it, this kind of described as almost a game between um, Schaefer and uh, Fletcher. And it talks about who has the advantage. Uh, so Fletcher had the advantage when Shane walked away from Chris um, because uh, people were getting mad at the, uh, the, the, the cow hands were causing the problem, but that the ire of the town was directed at the farmers. Okay, right. Um, so mm -hmm. Shane puts an end to that. So the town is either neutral or they're kind of on, um, on Joe's side. Right, okay. Yeah, oh, you mean prior to this? Yeah, after Shane beats Chris. Okay, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, the kind of the advantage is like, that's kind of made Fletcher back off a little bit. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, so there's a bit of peace again. And uh, so, but but during these times of peace, that's when Shane and Joe are nervous. Like, yeah, okay. You, what, that's when they're more like, okay, now like, what's, what's the Well, because they, yeah, exactly. There's, there's, a, there's a play. And it talks about them no longer working on separate parts or always, whenever they're out, they're always together. Yeah. Uh, and and in fact, playing. Joe starts wearing a gun at this point. Yeah. And he's where he looks at Shane, kind of like, are you going to, and Shane shakes his head no. Okay. Um, oh, and, and also when, when Bo um, Bobby sees the gun, he goes to tell his dad about it. And he's like, I uh, guess what Shane has in his blanket. And, and Joe said, uh, probably a gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, how do you know? And he's like, well, he's that, that's what he would have. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's like, well, aren't you going to ask him why he doesn't wear it? He's like, oh, that's one question I'll never ask him. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a great exchange. Yeah, yeah, it is. But anyway, so at this point, um, Shane's kind of taken a darker tone since he's had to kind of go back. He, he's realizing he can't break that mold. Mm -hmm. He's realizing he's going to be a fighter the, his, the rest of his life, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Bobby's wondering if his parents know about this. And he finds out his mom at least knows about it because this is the part where the mom, um, Miriam, asks Shane to stick around because mm -hmm. Shane's almost considering leaving because mm -hmm. he knows that his presence will bring more trouble down on the, the mm -hmm. family. Um, also, I just wanted to mention, I mentioned that Joe was uh, man enough to handle the stump by himself. He also would have handled Chris in a fight, too. There's he no doubt in my mind, yeah, Joe and Chris. Could've. Like, if Joe yeah. and Chris were to come to blows, even if it was two-on-one, Joe would have won. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but again, not not in the same way Shane would have. But yeah, uh, no, but, um, he, but he has his own way of handling. Things, yeah, so. yeah. You have to excuse my like ADD. I, I kind of bounce around. I'm sorry. But no. Anyway. Yeah. So so uh, this is a great scene. It's one of my um, one. Of, it's actually one of my favorite exchanges in the book where Miriam asks Shane to stick around, and Shane's like, "Do you realize what you're asking me to do?" And she mm -hmm. says, "Yeah, I know, but mm -hmm. please do it." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah. because and then um. I think this is where because she, she says that if they had to pull up roots and restart. It wouldn't, like, Joe could do it, but it would be really hard on him. And yeah. Um, almost like it would take all that fire out of him. That he's yeah. Because he's built this house after after Bobby was born. Yeah. And he, so this is, like, pretty much the only house that Bobby would have remembered. Mm -hmm. And it's essentially where he's put his roots down. And he's, like, you know, he's already put too much into this just to. Mm -hmm. And isn't there something there where it's like he also he would have been effectively run off, and that would have like unmanned him in a sense? Is isn't there a piece of that where she's like, if he goes up, he'll always feel like they're yeah, yeah. Or, or at You're least talking that, about that, Joe, yeah, yeah, that's a feature somewhere in the story. I think, yeah, that's yeah, where it's like if he were to leave, that just he wouldn't be able to live with himself. Yeah, that would, yeah. That would nod him. And, yeah, and so she realizes that what she's asking Shane to to step essentially back into that mold. Um. And she knows that too, mm -hmm. 
but she, and she's even said like this is really selfish of me to ask this but i'm going to ask it anyway mm-hmm. so um and, and when she says it's selfish she's not asking for her benefit she would be happy anywhere with her family right yeah she's, uh, she's, she's asking for purely sure. for the benefit of her husband yeah um yeah so uh, um yeah, much this is that same exchange where he says, uh, he, he where uh, Shane says, and you, like, because she says, she says, Joe needs you, like the like the yeah. fa- like the yeah. farm needs you or something. He's like, like what that. about you? And, and he, he goes like, and she goes, and I need you. And so, um, yeah, I think that's where the scene where you realize that there's real romantic chemistry between those two. Nothing's purely platonic in terms of. I, I don't even think they let themselves go there emotionally. Right. But but they do they do recognize it. Yeah, oh. um, you could say they have feelings for you, like it's a weird like love triangle. It is. A, it's um, a, well said. It um, is a weird. But because it, it's like they yeah. have feelings for each other, but not in the um, getting swept away with lust or anything like that. Exactly. It's, yeah. No. It's, 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 it's he respects her too much, and he respects Joe too much to do anything. And the same thing for her. She, and she's not the kind of woman who would cheat on her husband. Yeah. But like, um, I, I wonder, like, how would you, uh, like, what would be well, a good it's almost, example? I think it's almost like if, I mean, I don't know that I have an example, but it's almost as if they, uh, um, in another universe, oh, you know, Joe and, or, or you could see Marion and Shane being a couple, uh, yeah. or, you know, maybe if he, and there, there'd be the complication that she's this kind of woman who, um, you know, she's a, she's a, um, she's a farmer's wife and he's a, uh, a gambler and a gunfighter. We we assume a, we don't know the gambler for sure, but we assume from, from, the, from, the, epi- that, from yeah. the epilogue at the end, there's something about isn't Shannon uh, a gu- was a ga- gambler? When there's talk about who Shane might have been, there was talk of a a, a, a Shannon that was. I, I can't, that's I, not I, in the book, is it not? Is that not that I would... I'm sorry. I'm just want to check no, real quick because I was I'm, I in the part I want to get right too. I know there's mention of a Shannon, um, but it's kind of where it's in like the the. Yeah, the page sixteen. Uh, it might as well be. That's kind of the ep- the epilogue there. But... Yeah, yeah. So he says. Uh... Yeah, it says for a time they inclined to the notion that as the townsfolk spurred by the talk of a passing stranger that he was a certain Shannon who was famous as a gunman and gambler way down in Arkansas and Texas, okay. dropped from sight without anyone knowing. So there's when there's speculation Wait, about so Shane. See, I didn't actually get to that part when I was reading it again today. Okay. Uh, and the abridged version doesn't have that in there. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, see, like, see, yeah. see what I'm saying? The abridged yeah. version actually kind of butchers the book. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, yeah. sorry guys, don't don't go get. There's no point. This, there's this no point. This is yeah. perfect the way it is. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. But in any case, that's. I was just wondering where I got the gambler from, but I think yeah. that must be. So, and, but it, it, that's if you assume like uh, Bob in the book, he rejects that idea because there's just talk about who Shane really was. Right. And so they talk about well, there was the Shannon out, you know, that was a gambler from Texas and Arkansas who did these things. So anyway. Um, Shane may or may not have been that person, but no, that's that's fair to yeah. think about, though. Yeah. Um, so, so Shane is. Uh, I, I I like the idea that he doesn't answer the questions, like as far as who Shane is and stuff like that. He doesn't actually come out and tell you what Shane's past was like. Oh, Schaefer. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, a, he's so, a man of mystery. For sure. So, and, and I think that adds to it uh, very much. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, and good writers like you don't need to answer all the questions. Right. Like yeah. leave, leave. It's fun for yeah. the audience to yeah. discuss. Well, like, to, yeah. If this if this were a successful story on film today, there would be the the prequel series on Netflix. About, yeah. Like Shane in the early yeah. years. Well, and they'd have the woman that did it first. You know, yeah. like, there'd be a woman that would show Shane how to gun fight. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I mean, so. Okay, so um, so we both really like that exchange in the book. Yeah. Um, between Marion and Shane. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so there's that, and then, um, then the part where the whole family goes to town that you were thinking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is where, uh, essentially, on Friday nights, <clears throat> they would go to town together as a family, and uh, they would put in their orders for the next week. Essentially, prep up. It's Friday or Saturday nights, and um, so they would pretty much would hang out in the general store. And it mentions how Shane would be the one that would read the paper, why Joe would get into arguments about the proper mm. seeds mm. to use and stuff. Mm. Um, and uh, so, that's interesting. I, I didn't really think about that, but that, that what what a character detail that is. You know, Shane kind of taking interest in the events uh, yeah. throughout the you know the the broader range. Yeah, and then Joe kind of being focused on local matters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's very neat. Yep, again showing yeah. the two different men. That yeah, they are. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so Joe. Uh, Joe and Marion are called to go to the back because the general store's owner's daughter is the teacher of the town. 
Okay, yes. Yeah, and right. they have kind of, they have to go to like a, a conference because uh, because uh, Bobby keeps sneaking out <laughs> to to go fishing and you know. Okay. So, yeah, that's right. Um, anyway, so uh, while they're back there, uh, Joe kind of listens into the bar to make sure none of um, Fletcher's men's are men is, men is in there or mm-hmm. in there. Um, and he it's all clear at that point. So he goes back and then. Shane goes in there and he kind of makes a joke about how he's not going to get any uh, any soda pop because mm-hmm. he ordered soda pop to get Chris to fight him essentially. Yeah, yeah. So he's letting the bartender know, "Hey, I'm not going to cause problems tonight." Yeah, and that all started um, for for your viewers that may not be aware because he he was going to get a soda pop for for Bob, mm-hmm. and so and but it looked like and then Chris was like, "Oh, you actually drink some like whiskey or something?" Y- yeah, like, yeah, like he's drinking the kids. I thought drink. you just drank soda pop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. It's, it, you know, it's if you've read the book, you know the exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so then at this point, um, there's a red, um, what's his last name? Hmm. So these characters are, um, Marlin, Marlin, red, there's red Marlin, yeah, but that. then there's like Mason. I think this is the only time he was mentioned at this mm, point. Okay. I think he might. Yeah. And he's like a bigger him. guy who, um, is kind of meaner, like inherently okay. meaner. Mm, okay. Um, and so, uh, he comes in and with, I think there's like five guys in total mm-hmm. who come in and uh, they see Shane and uh, Red. Because Red is at the exchange with Chris. When Shane beats up Chris, Red is there. Okay. And Shane yes. calls him out and he sinks back in his chair. Yes, okay. So so now he's got four of the guys and not to mention a, a bigger guy. Mm-hmm. So he's thinking like, okay, we're going to take this guy. Yeah. Um, so there's a cool scene where uh, Bobby, Bobby is trying to get Shane to come with him. And Shane's just like, would you have me run? Yeah, right. And uh, they, they kind of show um, that you know he's he, Shane knew that this fight was going to come. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's uh, he's putting up a good fight. I think he actually takes a guy out of the fight pretty early on. Like mm-hmm. he mentions the guy crawling away towards the, the doors, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but essentially, you can't overwhelm multiple people. Mm-hmm. You no matter how good you are at fighting, mm-hmm. if you have four guys who are capable mm-hmm. on you, there's not a lot you can do. Mm-hmm. So uh, they get to a point where um, Marlin, Red Marlin, and another guy are holding Shane, and Mason starts punching him. And uh, then it, it's a great scene where he's like, he reels back to punch, but his punch never landed because uh, Joe heard the commotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Joe comes in, and, and see, this scene is completely cut out of the abridged version. Joe picks up um, Mason. Above his head, and he chucks him. Yeah, he throws yeah, him. Yeah, and, and Mason's described as being like the bigger guy in the fight mm-hmm. too, and that distraction is enough for Shane. He breaks free and he takes out Red from that fight essentially, mm-hmm. and Red just retreats, and the other guy is done. Mm-hmm. And um, then uh, Jack is going to go fight the guy that he just threw across the room, and Shane's like, "No, no, he's mine," because this was the guy who's willing to beat up a guy who is being held down. Mm, I got you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so Joe <laughs> wants to fight him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he he's like okay, he's gonna respect Shane at this point. But he's like ah, he's more my size, and uh, so at this point, I don't think it's made clear. Uh, but do you think Shane kills this guy? And it, I, there was a time I thought so, but I think it's uh, well. He talks about this gurgling noise that kind of yeah, makes me think he breaks his windpipe. But I believe he shows up later. I think he's mentioned later in the books, and Is so we. Ha- I, I don't think, remember him being mentioned later. Well, because because my first read, I thought it, I, I was under. Uh, under the impression that he killed him or somewhere in the because red I, is mentioned later on yeah but i'm pretty it's not but red who he beats up no i think but somehow there's something that makes me think that this is not um because i, I think i maybe even taught the first time i taught the book what we ta- i thought that he killed him but you get um but later on there's something that reveals that he's still alive okay I'm pretty um, sure of that. Again, um, I got you could pretty close like to after. the end, and, and I'm I'm like, please let us know what you actually think if you think Shane kills this guy or not. But either way, it's described. It's pretty brutal the way it's described. And yeah, it, it yeah. kind of. Um, well, we'll get into it, but it, you you, um, you kind of see how dangerous. Like the parents are really seeing that, knowing that he's dangerous and seeing that danger are two mm-hmm. different things mm-hmm. kind of described. But anyway, so at this point, um, you kind of see that the town is actually starting to get. On the farmer's side, because mm-hmm. it's mentioned that the guy who runs the stagecoach tries to come over and help Shane, because Shane's not after that fight. He's mm-hmm. kind of a little unsteady on his feet, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Shane like looks at him like, "Don't you dare touch me!" Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the, the book describes it's like the one person who he would accept help from, but he would never seek help from. Yeah, yeah. And, and then so Joe comes and and Shane whispers like, "All right, Joe." So Joe picks yeah. him up like a child, and yeah, yeah, yeah and starts to take him out. And see, this is um. Like, 
so it describes that they're on their way back home, and Shane and Joe are in the front of the wagon, and the mom, uh, Marion, and um, Bobby are in the back. And uh, Shane says, like, I didn't see what you did to the other guy um, because, he, you know, he was in the fight. And, you know, Joe's like, oh, I just, I t- I just tossed him across the room. And Marion laughs and says, no, he picked him up above his head and chucked him. Like, yeah, that's yeah. a big difference. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. kind of showing that she's really proud of her husband and for standing his ground. And Yeah, this is a, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I'm. Well, I was just thinking that, and I think it's at the end of this chapter when she's, because uh, she's doctoring them up at home. Mm-hmm. And But I'm, I'm probably getting ahead of you. Well, so, yeah, I just, I just like that where she's like very proud that he was fighting next to her. Yes, Shane. yeah. I really like yeah, that. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they've decided, well, because like there's a part where Shane tells, Joe to make sure Marion doesn't see what happens next. Mm. That's that's where, again, I could be wrong, but that's where I've always taken that he kills this person. I see, I see. Okay. But uh, you could be totally right on this one, so I'm well, not dogmatically I mean, going to say one way I, or the no, other. No, no, well, I mean, I, uh, the only reason I, I say that is because there was something that, that I felt like cor- corrected me from that same okay. uh, takeaway. I'll, I'll try to read the rest so. of the book and look for his okay. him reappearing. Okay. And, and I don't know if it's a reappearance or a mention or yeah. something, but there's something where it's, that made me think later on, like, oh, I kind of thought that wrong. Or yeah, something. if if I need to, I'll, I'll re-add this to the book. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll no, not re-add this to the book. If I, if, if I see him mentioned later on, like you suspect, I'll put it. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah. I okay. get text on screen. Oh, no, sure, yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to be wrong, but so he doesn't want her to see this, but she tells Joe that she's a, essentially because she asked him to fight, she's going to stick it out with them. So mm-hmm. she's going to see how, like the good and the bad, essentially. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Which again makes her great in my eyes. Like mm-hmm. that's uh, she's willing to see the consequences of what she's oh I see what you're saying. Asked gotcha. him to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, this is another fight. I think because I like to ask myself like how would things have gone if Shane wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I think. Joe would have won, but he would have been battered pretty. Yeah. Like I don't think he and, could. And, and it I, would have been iffy. Like yeah, it would have been like me. I think some of the townspeople might have jumped on his side. That's what I'm saying. Thinking too. I don't. I don't know that they would have. And I don't know that they would have sent so many. Maybe for yeah. just just Joe. Well, I mean, but maybe his big guy. But yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. And by the way, this one too. This would be if if you're looking at it approaching us like a like like a Beowulf battle. This would be. You know, the stump was one battle, and now you have this would be the this would be battle number two. So this would be like the equivalent of Grendel's mother. This is the as far as the structure of the book having these uh, each each battle more intense than the mm-hmm. one before. Uh, Grendel's mother is this battle is more intense than the stump battle. So. Right. So. Yep. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. Because so. uh, this is the one where Shane kind of gets a scar from getting punched. So the guy has a ring. I yes. Mean, you know, right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, they get back to the house and Marion's bandaging them up, and she tells uh, Joe because really Joe kind of came in and ended the fight. Is essentially mm-hmm. once he like that's all Shane needed to win the fight, which mm-hmm. is that like little bit of extra help. Yeah. Um. So he just has a ripped shirt. He's essentially not wounded. Mm-hmm. And um. So she's like, oh, you know, she's thinking about repairing his shirt, but then she's like, no, we're gonna keep this to remember this day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she's ex- she's over the moon. She's having like she's she's really thrilled by this thing. That I mean, as far as them, she's her her adrenaline is up. She's excited yeah. about what she witnessed yeah. and how. This but then then it kind of like the thought comes across where after Shane leaves, she starts well, she breaks down and starts to cry. But at what point when she says she says something that all of a sudden it's like oh she's no like, like, like that's, not, that's out in the room. <laughs> like a, well, she said like uh, has ever a girl ever had such men? Two such men. Two such yeah, men, it's like yeah. actually, Marion, you just have one, and it's Joe. Like you don't have two such. So and yeah. all of a sudden she realizes that she just basically said like I I love both of these guys, mm-hmm. and so and then and then like there's this it it, it, it got awkward like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the room, so, well, so, and also I think that it, she's realizing. Based off of what Joe says later on, like you know, after Shane leaves, um, he he's like, I'm not afraid to admit I know be- I've met a better man. Yeah, and he, so he gets she's it. realizing that Shane could kill her husband. Y- yeah, well, and, now, and a fair fight too. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. And but I think not only the, the, his his physical powers, I think Joe recognizes his his appeal that um, it's almost uh, again I can't help but and, and maybe I, I could be accused of drawing too much, but there's um, uh, from from this, but. When um, th- there's this um, uh, the 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 uh, attraction of of goodness, not not that Joe's not good, but again we have with Shane someone that takes all these qualities that are admirable in Joe to the next level. He's, mm-hmm. he's um, and so you have this. Uh, so so Joe understands the fact that she's attracted to him because not just because he's probably an attractive man, but because he has this this moral uh, quality that th- he's he's good. 
Mm -hmm. And and so it's um, and even I think about uh, David, you know, dancing before the Lord, and and um, and when his wife insults him, and you know, King King David, he says that, uh, uh, and and she goes, well, he, she she says something about how he's uh, you know behaved himself in front of the women of Israel or something to that effect, and he says, and so when David uh, rebukes her, he kind of finishes off his that by saying that. Uh, uh, by by saying, as for the, these women you spoke of, he goes, I will be held by them in honor, because you know his ultimately he was just displaying his his righteousness that he was dancing in joy before God, mm -hmm. and he's like there and there's something appealing in that that the fact that he's a he's a good man, mm -hmm. and so uh, there's a uh, um, and you see that with uh, so I think Joe understands the fact that it's not just like he's 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 more dashing or gallant or anything like that, but the fact that he's got this this quality of goodness that's inherently attractive. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 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 That's, um, that's good. Like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, then, um, I think at this point, Fletcher leaves town again. Yes. Right. And, um, I think there's some things that happen essentially like now that he's gone again, th that Shane and Joe are even more careful. <laughs> <laughs> like when they don't know what his play is, that's when they're the most careful. Yes, um, right. It's when the drums stop beating that you have to know, like, what are the natives doing? Yeah, yeah right. So. Yeah. After the bar fight, um, I think there's, like you said, there's some conversation, but uh, essentially, um, yeah, the, I think they have a couple weeks for Shane essentially to heal from that fight, and then, or a week or something like that. But yeah. Then, uh, they find out that Fletcher's back, uh, but the person who's telling them, and this is where, where Shane calls him a farmer as an insult. But he's telling him, like, oh, yeah, he got back last night. And essentially, he's brought the gunman with him uh, by the name of Wilson, Stark Wilson. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so anyway, um, so Shane's like, oh, well, quickly get all the, essentially circle the wagons. He wants to get all the farmers together because he knows that uh, with Wilson being a gunfighter, he's going to provoke somebody into drawing on mm -hmm. him. And then the gunfighter is going to kill the person. Uh, they mentioned this guy before. He's mentioned as a uh, kind of the weakest link of the farmers, um, Eddie. Oh. Um, in terms of his last name, mm. I can't think of it right now. Yeah. Anyways, uh, he's the kind of guy. Instead of working, he's out hunting and fishing. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, uh, anyway, so Shane's like, uh, "When did you get here?" And the guy's like, "Oh, this happened last night, and this is in the evening." So the guy's been there for close to twenty-four hours. Mm. Um. Oh, no, I was just thinking, no, I was just trying to think. I was, my mind's just trying to catch up with the story. So. Yeah. So uh, then Shane's like getting ready to dart out the door to try to find um, this person. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, because uh, it's urgent that they alert all the farmers. Yeah, and not so, to be yeah. drawn into this because yes, yeah. this guy's a killer. Yeah. Um, so Shane hears the, foot, the hoof prints coming in and he knows that this guy is dead. And uh, again, the abridged version cuts out the where the guy actually describes what happened. But it's kind of alluded to that people thought that the guy might be like half Indian. And Wilson calls him an Indian to insult him. Okay. And the guy loses his temper. And he, oh, he calls Wilson oh, a liar. Half yeah, he goes in the half breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he calls Wilson a liar. And Wilson essentially provokes him into a gunfight. Mm -hmm. And Wilson also carries two guns, which Shane mentions is just showing off. Um, now, I think that there is a practical reason to have two guns. Um, because mm -hmm. then you double your ammo. Well, I if we have to reload. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, okay, a Colt single action had something on the cylinder called a gate, mm -hmm. and you would pull that back, and then you would have to rotate the cylinder and manually eject each shell after you used it. Okay. And then you had to put in new shells one at a time. So reloading those guns took a long time. I see. Anyway, okay. so, but. Because, because but Shane referred to having two guns as a. Um, it's showing off. Show off stunt. Yeah. 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 And, and if you're a gunfighter, most time you're doing one or two shots. Okay. So you don't need it. But if you were like on the trail where like you would draw your gun once your rifle is out of ammo, yeah. it would be practical to have an extra gun. That makes sense. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. anyway, um, so uh, Eddie's, uh, before he could clear his holster, I think he, the, it's just described as him getting a grip on his gun. Mm -hmm. He's shot like Wilson's yeah. that fast. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so then I'm, then there's like a funeral held for them. And at that point, Joe, kind of has the town on his side because people mm -hmm. know that you know the farmer versus the gunfighter it's essentially a murder even yeah though, yeah uh he was provoked uh and so um fletcher knows that if he's going to get joe to move he's got to go now mm -hmm. and uh so he comes and that's where he offers him a thousand dollars for his land he offers to let joe stay in the house mm -hmm. 
and uh, he can even keep his herd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just he has to work for Fletcher. Yeah, and he can even keep uh, and, Shane on. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. yeah but just, the other farmers have to go. Yeah. And that's a compromise. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, the, the problem is you, you can't compromise with evil. Yeah, so. that's a good point. Well, and I think there's that scene. I think, too, Joe recognizes that he has he has a place of leadership among those people. I mean, he would be consider, considered a, an absolute traitor mm-hmm. you know so. well and there's that that part where the night before where shane's mad and he's like uh we're lucky that this country is able to produce people like joe mm-hmm. and then his wife man like mumbles under her, her breath and like shane or something oh, like it that is. so it's, it's kind of it's it's cool so mm-hmm. yeah it, in other words like shane wouldn't be doing this for anybody except for that family yes right yeah um yeah so uh but interest, interestingly enough though with schaefer this is this is a pretty good exchange um because there's a point where uh, fletcher is making his case that Joe, um, you know, Joe's sees the point that he's making, but he finally says, like, oh, I'm not here to argue that, or something like that, mm-hmm. or like, I can't. So there's, it's, um, Fletcher, make, as far as them, they were they were there first. I mean, we kind of respect that rule mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, that you kind of have uh, rights, whoever's the claim. Um, and so, but he also understands, like, this is just progress. Like, this is this, this is going to happen. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're the, the the day of the the cattle ranches roaming the range is they're they're just they're ending like there's nothing you can do to stop this and right. we're just part of that, um, but but at the same time it's interesting I know Jack Schaefer later on, um, uh, it felt like he had sort of uh, championed the wrong side of the conflict <laughs> he, he he felt like he had more sympathy for the ranchers later on after you know the success of as as he reviewed this issue more I guess or grew in his understanding of, or appreciation of what the conflict. Uh, he he favored the the ranchers over the homesteaders. Yeah. And I'm not really knowledgeable enough to have an opinion. And I oh, right <laughs> so. no me me neither. And, and and I don't know enough about you know the, whatever nuances or subtleties there were in Schaefer's point of view on that. But but I have seen like I've mm-hmm. encountered that somewhere along the line. So and I think Schaefer makes a good villain because you kind of understand where he's coming from. Schaefer oh Fletcher Fletcher yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, Fletcher yeah, sorry Schaefer no no no, no you're okay. yeah, yeah. Um, well Schaefer, Schaefer writes a good villain yeah, yeah he does yeah because his motivations are at least understandable yeah and exactly, he's yeah. competent yeah like he's not a he's not an idiot yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so at this point, he um, he offers him a, kind of a deal that's too good to be like really to pass up. Yeah. His, <laughs> for Joe, because his yeah. family would be secured, all the trouble would go away essentially yeah. for him. But but, but and then once again, though, they, you know, he would he would be uh, if he took it, he would it's it's a devil's bargain. Like yeah. he would be yeah. yeah he would be a heel. Yeah, and yeah. he and he wouldn't be Joe. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. he wouldn't be Joe. Yeah. If he, yeah. Right. Scared yeah. if he took it. So, uh, I think that's something that's sad too. Um, but then um, this is interesting. Because this just shows you that how Wilson is kind of a different animal. Yeah, he's because yeah. um, he's uh, he's like you should take him up on his offer. It'd be a shame if somebody else were to enjoy this house and enjoy that woman. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the first time somebody's actually crossed the line to threaten somebody's family. Because mm-hmm. if it's mentioned several times that these men they pass by Bobby like he's not even there, mm-hmm. and like they're trying to get Joe to move, but none of them even I don't even think um, Ferret thinks about. Fa- uh, Fair to call him fair. Fletcher. Mm-hmm. I don't think Fletcher even thinks about threatening his family. Mm-hmm. So this is like just this, this is just to kind of show you that Wilson's even kind of um he might even be too big for Fletcher. You know, like, okay, like yeah. you know, it's like who knows what what would have happened if he would have stayed there. You know, yeah, I see. What and and so also like he's the one person that Fletcher has that could also kill Joe in a one on one fight. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because Wilson's uh, he's bad news. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, and, and he's not in the book for very long. Like he's introduced near the near the end of the book, um, but I think that's a that's a cool it's a cool distinguishing to show you that he's like an extra level of bad on top of yeah everything well, else. Well, he's that poison that um, yeah that Joe mentions at the beginning when he's yeah. like, you know, comparing like uh, you know the, the two types of these yeah. these gunfighters. Yeah, yeah. So um, and it's at that point where Joe has a rifle, and I'm guessing it's a Winchester, like a lever action, because he's mentioned a rifle. Mm. He he meets he comes at the door with a rifle, and um, this guy just threatened his wife. Mm. And so you can just tell that Joe's thinking about trying to shoot him there. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, and that's then, where Shane steps in between them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then Shane insults Wilson, even though he's unarmed. Mm. And uh, he's trying to get Wilson. like, well, if Wilson shoots me, that'll give Joe enough time to shoot Wilson. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so and then at that point, Joe de-escalates it. And um, essentially Fletcher says, well, just come by the bar tonight. Because he wants to get Joe out in public, 
So mm -hmm. if Wilson draws on him, they can make it look like a fair fight. Yeah, right. right. Fair. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, then they pretty much spend the day kind of thinking about, like, you know, essentially Joe has accepted his fate. He thinks since Flesher called mm -hmm. him out and since Wilson insulted his wife, there's no way he can get out of this. Right, yeah. Yep. Um, and so Shane, I think, knows that there's no way he can talk Joe out of this right. either. Yeah. yeah. So he knows what he has to do. And yeah. Joe knows what Joe has to do. And yeah. Mary knows what yeah. they have to do. Exactly. Um, yeah. There's, there's but no... they just know that all they have to do now is wait. And it talks. Mm -hmm. to, it's great. It's really good at building the tension because he talks about the, mm -hmm. the day becoming, you know, the, strato, the shadows stretching into twilight mm -hmm. and stuff. It's beautifully written. Yeah. Important scene with Shane in that, too. Where he goes out to, um, yeah, look. yeah, he goes on to just admire the land, and it's like mm -hmm. Shane sees a world where he could have this. Mm -hmm. Well, is that see I, why I see that as almost uh, a prayer, uh, and I, I maybe I'm again reading too much into it, but it's almost like he's, it's I, I got the impression like he's asking, seeking guidance, asking permission, like to do this, because when he comes back. He's he's Shane in all mm -hmm. his in all yeah. his glory. Like he's he's now Shane the gunfighter, and he's just he's just he's he's stopped fighting that, and now he is fully embracing that role. And he because now he's that this has been, um, you might say he's been weaponized. Like he's now on a mission. This is now he's got he's he has a purpose for being what he is, and it's not simply him. Um, uh, it, this is no longer. Um, uh, this is no longer uh, something he has to escape from. It's something he can step into, I mm -hmm. guess, or to, to, to help. Yeah, and yeah. I could see that, and yeah. I would agree with that. But I, I would also say that you could say that because he doesn't get dressed, he kind of goes off uh, when Joe essentially says, like, there's a... Joe says, he's talking to his wife, and he says, well, he's like, I can... This clumsy body, like, is tough enough that I can at least... He can outdraw me, but I can take a bullet before, and, mm -hmm. and I can kill him before I die. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, this is easy knowing that if I die, Shane will take care of my yeah, family. Yeah. He's as a better man, is what he says. Yeah, that's right. And at that point, Shane stands up and walks away. And um, that's, Yeah, you're right. But, but you're right. I also think, because he's like looking over the, the, the property, and he's described several times where Shane looked over the property, um, to kind of bring it back to, if you look at it through the Christian lens and the, the Christ-like lens, this could be the, the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, I where mean, he yeah, could yeah. be like thinking, like, mm -hmm. take my cup from me. Yeah, I can see that. And sure, sure. and this is the part where he's That's like, great. Yeah. he has that opportunity where he could be happy here, mm -hmm. but also he's Shane, where he's like, he's a wanderer, mm -hmm. you know, where where Joe is not afraid to put roots down. I see. That's good. I I like that better than mine. It's sort of like he's embracing his um, his his destiny. Yeah. 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 And kind of going back into that mold, but he's stepping back into it on his terms. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. where before and so. But also, he knows that there's no way he can talk Joe out of going. Right. No, because Joe. Well, any because anything less would be he would be a coward. He wouldn't be Joe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 He wouldn't be a scary. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so Shane comes back and, like you said, he's he's gotten rid of his um, his farmer clothes. He's put on his gunfighter clothes mm -hmm. and he's got his gun on his hip. And this is the first time um, that we see him with his gun on his hip. And mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. He's described as like he's wearing dark clothes except for the bit of ivory on the handles, which mm -hmm. you know is a bit of white. You know. Mm -hmm. And, and doesn't it say like he kind of fills the door, like he actually yeah. even looks taller? Yeah. It reminds me of Odysseus when uh, he comes back home from um, uh, in, in um, uh, the Odyssey and how he gets sort of, uh, Athena sort of graces him with, um, uh, with with sort of a divine stature. So like all of a sudden he, he kind of shakes off his beggar rags and after his, he comes out you know, as Odysseus, I can't remember if he's getting cleaned up first or whatever, but... He, he all of a sudden he's he looks more than what he is, and mm -hmm. so he kind of we get so once again I think it's almost as if, uh, or maybe it, it is indeed that Schaefer's wanting to uh, imbue him with this this epic grandeur or this mythic right. status. So, but yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so he comes in and he's telling Joe he's like I'm going to go fight uh, for you. Yeah, yes. And Joe is saying like, well, there's no way that I can let you go without people saying that I backed out. Mm -hmm. And so he thinks he's losing respect to the community. I don't think that would have happened. I think nobody would have questioned it, you know. If he sent, said, yeah, he would have well, sent Shane. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think I, Joe I wouldn't have been able to live with himself, but I don't no. think anybody would like. They would, they would understand, yeah. but at the same time, I think that like if he actually sent somebody in his place, I think that I, I think yeah, he, Joe wouldn't have been able to have accepted it, uh, especially if Shane got killed in the bargain. 
you know, he would have felt like he'd just sent him to his death and, yeah. and to die in his place, and he wouldn't have accepted that. But, but at the same time, I think there's always, I think he always would have been seen as the guy who, you know, sort of who backed down. They, they, yeah. they would understand why he did because he was going to, you know, he had no way of winning. Yeah. But that, uh, was, well, no one else was going to face Wilson <laughs> voluntarily. Like, right. That yeah. Was, yeah. No, true. Shane was the only yeah. person who kind of volunteered to fight him, like yeah. when he didn't have to. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so then, so Shane, knowing that there's no way he can talk Joe out of going, I don't think Joe would have like nobody would have blamed Joe for not going, but Joe would have blamed Joe. Yeah, well, definitely he would have been his own worst critic. Though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Shane knocks Joe out by hitting him um, up in the back of the head with a gun, like you know, just uh, mm. this is behind a temple. Yeah, or that's right. So. Yeah, kind of with the flat. Well, Shane kind of talks to him and gets him distracted, and then knocks him out. He he wants it to be clean because yeah, uh, if Shane and Joe were to come to blows. Shane would win, but, but he probably wouldn't be able to fight after that. Yeah, right. He'd have to. He'd have to really <laughs> pour on the sauce. So he knew that he would have to make it yeah. quick and clean, which he does. Yeah. And, and also out of respect for Joe too, he doesn't yeah. want to do anything yeah. permanent to him. And it's it's described as like he catches Joe and sent, like lays him down gently and respectfully. Yeah. yeah. And his uh, Marion sees this whole thing and she just sits there because she knows that Shane's doing what she asked him to do. Mm-hmm. And um, she asked Shane at that point if he's doing that for her. And that's where Shane says he can't separate them from mm. her from them. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, yes, of course. Like he he loves her again, not in a in a, in a lustful way, but platonically. Mm. But he loves them too. He loves the family. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, right. This, they're all of a piece. Yeah. For him. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Um, and but I don't know. I was just thinking of that. Uh, oh, uh, you're probably getting to this. So the 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 line he says about when when what uh, when Joe comes to. <clears throat> Yeah, what, what to what to tell him? Yeah, well, uh, what do you say? Uh, when when he says, uh, "Well, actually, you've read it sooner. You could probably quote it better than me." <clears throat> oh, there's no shame in losing the shame. Yeah, he says yeah, in the third person. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool, because um, he's uh, he's he's fully aware of who he was, and and that yeah, like it's, he doesn't mm-hmm. have to worry about uh, feeling like he just got beat by. Well, him. and he wasn't aware of that conversation where Joe knows that Shane's better than he is. Yeah, like, right. as a fighter, at least. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Yeah. That's a good good line, and I think once again it goes to the. It, I think it's um, kind of plays into both uh, Shane's mythic stature and his almost his um, his uh, divine stature as well, perhaps. Mm-hmm. You know, are, you know, symbolically. Yeah. But. So uh, Shane rides the town, uh, and um, the book has it to where he rides with. Um, Bobby, right? Like, yeah, he's like in the back of the wagon or something. Right? Well, it's in the horse because Shane goes on and gets his horse and he gets his like saddlebag and his so. Okay, so where's Bobby in that? Or um, I think because um, okay, so in the abridged version, I, I didn't get to this part in the book yet. Like I, I've read the book, but today I didn't get to this part in the book. But in the abridged, it seems like he sees Bobby and he picks him up and like sits him on the horse. Okay, okay. And I think that's just him enjoying that life as long as he can before he gets back I to see. the gunfight. Okay. So, because um, then he puts Bobby down and tells him to go back home. Yeah. And Bobby doesn't. He just goes into the thing. Right. So uh, Shane arrives into the thing. He sees Wilson, but there's um, uh, Fetcher. Is it Fetcher or Fetcher? And Fletcher. Fletcher. Fletcher, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Wilson and Fletcher are, uh, Fletcher's nowhere to be seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at this point, you know, he's hiding with a shotgun. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you don't know that, but we've become aware of that fact. Um and Shane um, challenges Wilson to a fight, and it's described as they both draw and they both hit each other. Mm-hmm. But like where Shane is kind of grazed, Wilson uh, is shot in the arm, mm-hmm. and when he goes for his other gun, Shane shoots him again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, it's a neat scene. It's well yeah. described. Yeah, because yeah. it it's kind of described like there, there's tension building, and then boom, the action mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. And, so then uh, Shane is... And we don't see Shane being hit, is it, at this point? It, well, really? they, he describes like there's a little bit of blood, kind of, essentially. Okay. Like, he says his shirt starting to get okay. a little dark, near, okay. like you know, above his gun belt. Okay. So Shane walks to the... Um, he's, I, he's essentially looking for Fletcher. He's going to finish what he started. And Fletcher shoots him in the back with a shotgun. And because the, the, he says he like looks like a breeze pushes his shirt. Mm-hmm. And then the window behind Shane explodes mm-hmm. essentially because and and uh, it, it's really really well described where Shane turns around and he points and mm-hmm. he hits uh, Fletcher one time Fletcher's like upstairs mm-hmm. and he was Fletcher was trying to get the barrel like essentially repointed back at him 
because a double barrel shotgun, you have two triggers usually. You'd pull one, especially back then you would have two triggers. So you would fire, and then that's the advantage of the double barrel shotgun is you'd fire once and then you'd have your backup fire shot. So mm-hmm. in the amount of time that the recoil would have come up and he would have had the gun re-leveled at Shane, Shane was able to turn around and shoot him mm-hmm. and he falls off the balcony to the ground. And uh, Shane backs up to the door. He's like, I'm leaving and there's not one of you who's going to follow me. Mm-hmm. And he starts to head out and Bobby follows him. Is this where's the line where he says that that finishes it? Is that where he yeah, says, yeah, uh, yeah? He Wilson. says that that about finishes it. And yeah. he's like, I'm leaving and no one's mm-hmm. going to follow me. Or he, he says something. I'm I'm paraphrasing mm-hmm. at this point, but um, Bobby starts to ask him, like, if Shane had been in practice, would Wilson have been able to draw? Mm-hmm. I love this. Line, and yeah. uh, he said he described he knew exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah, so mm-hmm. much better than no more guns in the valley. I I, I get yeah. that, and it's fine for the movie, and I don't I don't object to it as far as the movie's concerned. But I, I love this exchange at the end. That's not in the film. Well, if there are no more guns in the valley, then the valley's doomed because the next Romian bandits or Indian tribe <laughs> will just kill the kill the valley. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, so but he says, uh, yeah, if uh, if I'd been in practice, he would have never cleared the holster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And so, what's your takeaway from that? Is the because we we have a discussion about well, that, he says I think, that in my class. he says that Wilson's the fastest he's ever seen. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's true or not. I, I think that frankly, Shane never got out of practice. Like cause mm-hmm. he, I don't know. So I, I don't. I think Wilson probably would have been able to match Shane because I think he's kind of meant to be the opposite, like mm-hmm. you know, the evil mm-hmm. version. Right. Um, so I, I kind of think that. He probably is just as fast as Shane, but mm-hmm. like that that would be my takeaway. What would you mm-hmm. say? Well, I, my, my take, and I think the, the text says something about the, uh, well, the Bob, Bobby later understood something that. Well, yeah, because he, he knew what I needed to hear. At yes, that time. that's okay. So that's yeah, where, yeah, that's, that's, where, that's, where, that's where I get that from. Yeah, as well. yeah, but I think it's um, I think it's that as Bobby as a child, I I think we you don't under, I, the idea that um, uh, to a child's mind, um. There's this. I think there's the idea that that, that the evil, that because if if he had owned the fact that um, he had to explain some way how evil could nearly kill good, mm-hmm. evil almost won, and for a child to, to hear that, like it, it would shatter their world because they live in a world where moral always the good mm-hmm. always triumphs, and so I think for me it's like Shane is saying that uh, he had to explain that away for Bobby. Like yeah, mm-hmm. it was it was basically like. There was there was a human part of this that yeah I, I just if I if I just stayed that that yeah good evil doesn't stand a chance against good mm-hmm. and it was only because I just didn't stay in practice that yeah. it, it got oh, yeah, in a lucky yeah. shot. Well, there's uh-huh. a there's a C.S. Lewis quote uh, where he said that the point of fairy tales isn't to show kids that there are dragons because they will meet dragons soon enough, but the point of the fairy tale is to show the kid the dragon to be defeated. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I would even maybe I'm not. One I guess to, taking that back to Beowulf. I mean, about the dragon. You yes. Know. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm not one to uh, to try to um, uh, um, go farther than than Lewis. I mean, I don't want to make, make no, that suggestion. Yeah. But I almost think like the purpose of the fairy tales is to show that the dragon will indeed be defeated. Like yeah. like the that the, um, the the good will win. Yeah. And so and well, the, the Bible shows us that. I mean, that's, that's the truth that's being carried forth in in, in all of these uh, narratives that have that staying power and uh, speak to our hearts as, as as early as children. So I think that, but for Bobby to see this, like Owen was, and, and you know, Shane admits it, like it's the fast I've ever seen. And so to to think like to tell a, a child that yeah, evil has a fighting chance of winning. Like, mm-hmm. like no, <laughs> the child doesn't want to hear that. And so. He's um, in 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 in, um, I, and I don't think that's the message that Schaefer wants to say. I think we even as readers we never had any doubt that Shane would win. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, he does get wounded, and there's suggestion that it's a mortal wound. That oh, he yeah. Will, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. Um, so there's but nevertheless, um, uh, that good triumphs. I says so. You, but you have that, um, and I think he was uh, Shane kind of going along with this the way that Bobby was or Bob, you know, Bobby was making sense of this in his mind Shane just felt like yeah let's just go with that like because you need to you need to see that that yeah there's no you still need to hold on to this childish concept that 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 evil is is far outmatched by good yeah so it's like he hesitated a moment he gazed down at me and and to me he knew he knew what goes on in a boy's mind mm-hmm. And what can he, what can help him stay clean inside? Yeah, there it is. Through the muddled, dirty years of growing up. 
Yeah. Sure. Sure, Bob. You never had cleared leather. Or cl- cleared the holster. Yeah, yeah, never cleared the holster. Like, yeah, yeah this would have been an easy, easy yeah. fight. Yeah, she would have broken a sweat. Yeah. yeah. And those th- those muddled years of growing up, because it's it's those things where it, it does take growing up to realize that, and I don't think it's that we we, we begin to question will well, good triumph at, at last, but we realize that um, there there there. I mean, history shows us, unfortunately, we, uh, that that sometimes history has the upper hand, or history, history. that evil has the has, yeah. has the upper hand at, at times. And so, mm-hmm. um, but um, and so, but that but that takes a um, that, that that's a that's a that's a realization too hard for a child to swallow, maybe. And yeah. So, yeah. Yep. And again, knowing what a boy needs to hear. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Then this is where I talk about um, Pell Ryder has kind of this ending um, where, where um, he talks about the um, the big horse. Uh, well, Shane, oh, before it, Shane said, uh, there's only one more thing I can do for them now, talking about the parents. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then he leaves. So Shane says, this is like my final act that I can help your parents with. Um, I have my thoughts on why he says this, but I want to hear what your thoughts on why why Shane leaving the valley is so important. Okay, um, well, I'm I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So more than trying to put together my own, but I, I would feel like this would be um, him. There's a couple reasons. Uh, one is that he's no longer going to be this um, um, uh, um, as far as that that weird love triangle that you mentioned, mm-hmm. as going to, Marion is going to have um, no no outliers to her, uh, you know, nothing distracting her vision from focusing directly on Joe, and um, and again, not that she had a wandering eye, but we, we I think mm-hmm. we've covered that that there's, there's you know, but nevertheless that he's going to be out of the picture, mm-hmm. so that's going to make that that much easier, and um, and then that they, uh, I think it's for the fact that this is um, their. Uh, Family, I mean, there, 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 there's, there's no more need uh, for him. Yeah. So he, he's kind of, um, uh, he's kind of, this, this is a, a clumsy way of saying it. But he's kind of worked himself out of a job. So. <laughs> right. Well, um, so uh, then my thing is, he's stepped back into the mold. Like they make it clear, he stepped back into the oh. mold as a gunfighter. Oh, that's right. He's yes. also killed the fastest man he's ever seen. Okay. So one way people would try to make a name for themselves back in the old west is they'd try to find out who was on top, mm-hmm. and they'd try to kill them. Oh, so like, oh, like, I'm the right. guy who killed the so and so. That's um, right. Yeah. And so, if Shane would have stayed there, every wannabe gunfighter that wanted to make a name for himself would come there to try to oh, kill Shane. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And is there, by the way, and does he say something like in this book, or is it just in the movie where he says there's no going back from killing? Yeah. Yeah. He says that. Does book, he? Yeah. He says in the book yeah. too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe even, that, and maybe that even ties into what you're saying. If you're justified in killing somebody, if you kill somebody like in self-defense or defending other people, like if mm-hmm. you killed somebody because you had to, you didn't murder somebody, you killed somebody. It's going to affect who you like. You, yeah, it's going to change you. Well, and it's going to maybe change the way people see you too. Even though you know, the, you know, Joe already speculated. I'm sure that that um, that uh, Shane had killed people in the past. Hey guys, uh, my SD card got full on my camera, and I'm still getting all the equipment I need so I don't have any extra SD cards. So uh, thankfully, we're using the Rode Wireless Go microphones, which have an internal recording. So Chris and I are going to continue this discussion. Uh, we're going to wrap up real quick because we are under kind of a time crunch. We're almost done. But we're just going to finish our discussion, and uh, I will just put like a, a picture. <laughs> I'll okay, put some okay. pictures in the post. But I do apologize. Um, we were I was really enjoying the conversation yeah, we were right. having. Yeah, it's, we've got um, a lot more mileage out of this than I thought. Yeah, so uh, Shane, um, we, we've... We, I think we kind of, uh, we talked about why Shane left the Valley. Um, it was the final act that he could do for them. Um, but the the thing that kind of leads to the um, the ending of, I think it's High Plains Drifter, and if it's Pale Rider, which one which one did we say was a Shane remake? Uh, Pale Rider. Pale Rider. Uh, so it talks about uh, the big horse, patient and powerful. Mm. Uh, his horse is a cool character too, by the way. It's kind of, it's, it fits Shane. The yeah, horse right. fits Shane. Um, yeah. Powerful was already settling into a steady pace that had brought him into our valley. So, we, like the way you imagine him leaving is the way he kind of mm-hmm. came in. Mm-hmm. Um, the two uh, and the two, our valley and the two, the man and the horse were a single dark shape in the road as they passed beyond the reach of light from the windows. Oh no, no, I was just thinking. No, if you continue reading, I was just thinking, pointing to this. I strained my eyes after him, and then in the moonlight, I could make out the um, an inalienable outline of his figure receding into the distance 
lost in my loneliness, I watched him go out of town, far down the road, where it curved down and the level country beyond the valley. There were men on the porch behind me. I was aware only of the dark shape growing small and indistinct along the far reach of the road. A cloud passed over the moon. There it is. Yeah. And he merged into <clears throat> he merged into the general shadows. And I could see I could not see him. And the cloud passed on. And the road was a plain, thin ribbon to the horizon, and he was gone. He was taken up into the clouds. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's yeah. like, and that's, uh, well, again, that's the, there's a shot at the end of Pell Rider that's very similar, like, except mm-hmm. it's kind of in the daytime, but it's like where a fog bank rolls over. Okay, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, so then uh, he, um, Bobby is taken back to, uh, Bobby's taken back to his house, mm-hmm. and they recount what happened to the, to, to Joe and Marion, and uh, Joe is upset, reasonably upset, mm-hmm. and he kind of stays up all night. Um, and in the morning, he tells his wife he wants to leave because he just—it's not going to be the same. Yeah. We didn't talk about it, but Shane built a—he extended their corral for them mm-hmm. when Joe right. was gone. Yeah. And uh, she tells Joe to try to push the post over the fence and, post. Yeah. yeah, the fence post. Yeah. And even though he the same strength that he used to push that stump out, he couldn't move. Like there's like a little bit of creaking, like yeah. you know. But the post, and so she's saying Shane is here. And he built this for us. Yeah. Um, and then there's this epilogue, which is great. So, by the way, that post is the second most important symbol in the book. So you, it mm. bookends the the stump. So you have yeah. you had the stump representing Fletcher and the cattleman, and then but then you have this uh, uh, this post representing um, Shane. Shane. And then and also the and the, you could say the homesteaders too that they were there to stay. Mm-hmm. But then you have but I think also the stump rep- or the post represents. Um, um, oh, there was another uh, thing about this. This un this unmoving, well, you could. I, I this this is going this is a stretch, but uh, in terms of the cross, I think mm. you could have like this 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 um, this this permanence in the landscape. I would wonder if I were like d- making a movie on Shane, I would probably frame the post to look like a cross. Mm. Okay, you need that's, yeah, that's in some way, would, yes, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So then, um, it, this doesn't. We didn't get into too much detail about this, but when Shane goes to confront Wilson, he sees Chris in the saloon, mm-hmm. and he like he kind of grins at him. He looks at he looks at mm. oh, he's, oh, he's looking at everybody kind of stoically, but then he sees Chris and he kind of grins, and Chris kind of smiles back, and then the action starts. Okay. Uh, so Chris comes back. He's, his arm is still in the sling, but he he says essentially like I know that I'm a poor replacement, but I would like to work for you. Yeah. He, interestingly and, enough, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep doing anyway, kind of going back to the Christian lens of this, um, this is where the redemption. You know, like mm-hmm. he's a character who's very redeemed. true. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then Marion mentions that she thinks Shane would like that. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so no, I was just thinking the, the name Chris, he's a he's a Christian. It's a it's, he's a convert. So, yeah, so we get a picture of, of the, the the redeeming effect of Shane changing this once that was an enemy into a into a, a follower, you know, is and becomes a um so and I so here again, I think, you know, we have Joe and Mary and we have Chris. So we have like the, a Christian uh, yeah. we kind of get the effects of the this um uh, so I, I don't. I don't think any of this is by accident. Uh, sorry, Mr. Schaefer. Like I, think, I, I don't. I can't believe that this is just. This is too coincidental. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not wanting to call call him. It could be uh, like divine. You know. It could be. I mean, yeah. I, I guess I have to give room. <laughs> well, give lots of room for that. But there's uh, that line from Deep Space Nine. Um, the Taylor. The Taylor's Garrick, right? Yeah. Yeah. Garrick, yeah. Garrick. He says, uh, like, I believe in coincidences. They happen all the time. I just don't trust coincidences. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Right, there. So. Well, maybe I should take that line then. In, in this case, because if it is, he's he he has been without a doubt divinely helped because these these things line up so well. Um, and so if he did it by accident, he was he was. Uh, I, I won't go so far as to say he was writing under inspiration, but but he was definitely um, he had an angel looking over his shoulder. Right. So. so this is actually the only book that ever actually makes me tear up. Mm. When I, like I, I have, you know, it's, it's uh, this this last chapter. Do you want to read this? Um, it's two pages, like a page Do I want and to read, a half. Read the whole chapter. Yeah, it's just a page and a half. But okay. this always gets me for some reason. Okay, so. okay. So I see what you're saying. Um, okay. Um, again, this is told from uh, Bob as the narrator. I guess that is all there is to tell. The folks in town and the kids at school would like to talk about Shane, to spin tales and speculate about him. I never did. Those nights at Grafton's became legends in the valley, and countless details were added as they grew and spread, just as the town, too, grew and spread up the riverbanks. 
but I never bothered, no matter how strange the tales became and the constant retelling. He belonged to me, to father and mother and me, and nothing could ever spoil that. For mother was right. He was there. He was there in our place and in us. Whenever I needed him, he was there. I could close my eyes and he would be with me, and I would see him plain and hear again that gentle voice. I would think of him in each of the moments that revealed him to me. I would think of him most vividly in that single flashing instant when he whirled to shoot Fletcher on the balcony at Grafton Saloon. I would see again the power and grace of a coordinate force beautiful beyond comprehension. I would see the man and the weapon wedded in the one indivisible deadliness. I would see the man and the tool, a good man and a good tool, doing what had to be done. And always my mind would go back at the last to that moment when I saw him from the bushes by the roadside just on the edge of town. I would see him there in the road, tall and terrible in the moonlight, going down to kill or be killed and stopping to help a stumbling boy and to look out over the land, the lovely land, where that boy had a chance to live out his boyhood and grow straight inside as a man should. And when I would hear the men in town talking among themselves and trying to pin him down to a definite past, I would smile quietly to myself. For a time, they inclined to the notion, spurred by the talk of a passing stranger, that he was a certain Shannon who was famous as a gunman and gambler way down in Arkansas and Texas and dropped from sight without anyone knowing why or where. When that notion dwindled, others followed, pieced together in turn from scraps of information gleaned from stray travelers. But when they talked like that, I simply smiled because I knew he could have been none of those, none of these. He was the man who rode into our little valley out of the heart of that great of the great glowing west, and when his work was done, rode back whence he had come, and he was Shane. So, yeah. So ultimately, Shane uh, came in, and he uh, he was able to let Joe um, Bobby grow up, like with a dad and with roots. So Bobby didn't have to go out and become a gunfighter and kill mm, him. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and be you know driven off the land, and yeah, there there's, uh, yeah, he fixed things for yeah. for Bob and and the the Stark family in general, mm -hmm. and I think and I love the way I mean if you needed any more evidence that this was yeah that ending was really really hard not to say there's Christians in yeah Boston. like like I mean how can you how can you not see <laughs> where he talks about him being with me yeah he, <sighs> what, he was there he was there in our place and in us whenever I needed him he was there I could close my eyes and he would be with me and I would see him plain and hear again that gentle voice. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, if, to, to read that and not think of the, uh, the, well, the gospel message, it's almost, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well, hard. we're going to wrap it up here just because like, like I mentioned, we are kind of in our time restraint. I could probably talk about this book for another hour. It's, easily. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it lends itself um, a small book, but a lot of talk comes from it. Yeah. Yeah. Lot, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, obviously if you haven't read the book, I hope you read it before you watch this video. I hope you. I hope you've read this book so we don't spoil it for you. Yeah, right. It's yeah. worth going in blind. Uh, but yeah. uh, thank you guys for watching so much. I apologize for the the um, the ending that we had, but um, I'm glad that we had the technology to keep recording because yeah, it's fun. That, that this this was fun. Yeah, uh, Chris, uh, thank you so much for being part of my video. I really really appreciate well, it. Well, Chris, thank you for the invitation. So. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, uh, and thank you for watching. And until next time, take the initiative and roll out. <laughs>